Hey there everyone, it's Anthony back with another video here on Single and Placing. Hi. We're having a fantastic day, weekday, weekend, week month, all of that good stuff. Evening, morning, overnight. <laughs> Hold on. Um, so yeah, hi, hello. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Um, we're out here at an unknown <laughs> Unknown Reservoir. I'll have to look up the name. Maybe I'll put it in the description box, but come on. Come on. But yeah, I'll have to have to put it in in the description box because I don't know the name of this place. Um, so yeah, hi, we're doing a vlog. Um, a little walking vlog. And I, I'm going to try to film a responding to your comments video today. Um, I just need to get my bearings here. I've never been here before. Um, so I decided to run some errands today. Today's Saturday at the time of filming this. Decided to run some errands. And one of the things that I did over the past week or so is I got Apollo switched over to a new dog food. Not that the one that he was currently eating was necessarily a problem, but there have been some... Oh, we're at the Robert F. Clement Park. Um, there have been some ingredients and sourcing issues with a couple of major dog food manufacturers recently, and so I just wanted to get him... Um, Transitioned off of Origin is the dog food that we typically get him. Come on. Um, so yeah, we we have I have him on Origin, um, either their Tundra formula or their original formula. But I've been hearing some scuttlebutt. You need a pee. Um, I've been hearing some reports that there's been some dog illnesses and sickness going on, and even though they can't really trace it specifically to one company or brand, um, there, um, there is some manufacturers that have been called into question in terms of their sourcing, and if there is an issue, so nothing's been proven or confirmed, but there's just some potential red flags going on in regards to some pet manufacturers and origin popped up as one of the brands listed that might be potentially be part of this i i don't know you know how much of this is just people you know overreacting and how much of you know if their dog is getting sick if it's really tied to the food that they're eating or not come on this way um, but there's just some concern out there. So, you know me and Apollo, I like to play it safe, and he seems totally healthy. He has a vet appointment on Monday, just for a general health checkup, and I might bring that up with the vet and see what they think. Um, but just to play it safe, I decided that I'm going to invest a little bit more into <laughs> making sure that he has... Um, the, the best food that I can give him, um, the best the best food that I can give him that isn't raw. Um, I do give him raw treats and stuff here and there, but as far as feeding him completely raw, I just don't trust myself with um, figuring out, you know, okay, he needs this much potassium and this much calcium and this much of this and that. Um, I've done a lot of research into it and uh, hold on. Um, yeah, I've done a lot of research into it, and a lot of the folks that do feed 100% raw have to include, like, a bunch of different supplements and stuff, and um, a lot of times they're synthetic supplements, which I don't necessarily trust myself in giving him the right dose of everything. Come on. Come on. I think he might go. Yeah. Okay. Let's get. A, let's take a little detour so we can take a break from humans for a second. Um, we'll come back to walking around the lake. But there's a lot of people over here. 
this is such a long preamble at the start of an responding to your comments, but I have some life stuff that I wanted to talk about. So anyway, I've done research into raw dog uh, doing raw feeding, and there's just so much that you have to pay attention to as far as making sure that they get the right um, minerals and nutrients and all that stuff. And a lot of recommendations that I read were like, oh, feed raw, but then you know, go to the pet store or GNC and get these supplements and this supplement and grind up this pill. And I just don't trust myself. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a, I'm not a, a veterinary nutritionist or anything. So I don't know how much of that stuff, you know, he'll need. And so I want to find as close to fresh food as possible or find the best kibble that I can give him and know that, you know, scientists have, have looked into it, nutritionists have looked into it, and it's going to provide him with all the stuff that he needs. So if we're not going to do Origin anymore, um, I used to have him on a food brand called Carna 4, which is um, air-dried dog food, so it's not extruded. They don't use extreme heat. It's just air-dried, dry, air so it retains a lot of the the natural um, minerals and all that good stuff. So it's like one of the highest rated dog foods you can get out there. It's produced in small batches out of Canada and Canada has a much higher standard for dog food than the US does. So he's been on that before and he really likes it. It's just pricey. You know, um, at, at this stage, prices for dog food keep going up. So a 20 pound bag of dog food um, of carnivore is about $170. And that lasts him about a month, uh, sometimes a little less. So it's pricey, but I just, you know, wanted to take care of my boy. So I was researching that, and they don't use any synthetic additives, so no, no synthetic supplements or minerals or anything. It all just comes from the sprouted broccoli seeds and all the stuff that they put in there. Um, so we got him that. And then um, the, the, only thing, the only thing with that food is it's a little lower on the protein percentage than, um, than Origin. And so I wanted to uh, mix in some higher protein dog foods. So I did a ton of research and I found a, another Canadian brand called Smack. And Smack is um, dehydrated dog food and it's very high in protein. It's like in the 50 something percent protein. Come on, let's go. Um, so I ordered that for him. They had a deal on their website and it's about the same price as Carnivore, maybe a little bit more, um, but I'll be doing half and half. So I ordered that online. They had a special and um, I was just kind of looking to see if there's a local dog food store or pet store that carries smack in Colorado and there's only like three or four stores in the state that carry it and one of them is just on the other side of this lake so we just left there and they were super nice it's like a it's like a, a fancy pet food paradise like all natural stuff tons of different raw and frozen food like it, it was like a dream not only for me but for him because it's all like amazing quality stuff, very high end. It's called Heroes Pets. And so we just left there and the staff is super knowledgeable about all their products. And they gave me a bunch of samples of Smack so I can take that home and see which flavors he likes best. Cause I got a chicken one and a fish one. Um, chicken and fish for him. Um, it's rockfish, and so we're going to get those home, and I'm going to feed him some for lunch today, see how he likes it. But um, yeah, they, they mentioned that smack is a little low in vitamin D. Their formulation's a little bit low, so um, they said just give him some fish treats, either like herring or sardines, or um i could also do a supplement so i ended up getting some herring treats and they said just give him a few herring treats during the day and that'll take care of his vitamin d um 
He also has some frozen sardines that I give him once in a while. So they're like, yeah, that'll be totally fine. And then we were at the register and they had uh, bison ears and they have the hair on them and everything still. They're like dried bison ears um, with the hair and stuff. And he immediately shot over to the little display of those and was like all over them. I've never seen him so, cause usually when we're going through a pet store, he'll sniff at stuff, but he doesn't like freak out and like grab stuff or like, you know, take things off the shelf. He just kind of investigates and then moves along. But he was really into these bison ears and was like, all right, I guess, I guess I'm getting you these. So he got bison ears. He got, um, they had a two for one deal on some beef trachea filled with, um, filled with organs. And he loves those. And those are usually expensive, but I got two bags for 15 bucks, which is a really good deal. I might go back after this walk and get two more and just load up the freezer because he loves those and they're really good for him. Um, so anyway, so we went fancy pet pet store shopping today. Um, and yeah, so anyway, I left the store and there's this reservoir right here with a walking trail. Come on, let's go. And I was like, you know what? Let me take the boy on a little loop here and get some miles in since we're already here we're about 25 minutes from the house um so i was like let's just take him for a walk since we're already here and um i'll respond to some comments hopefully if i can get around to it there's just a lot of people around look at all these prairie dogs this is crazy there's a lot of them I hope you can see that. Um, wow, they're they're pretty bold. There's one like right here next to us. They're not. They do not care. Come here. They'll bite you. Come on. Come on, Sniffy. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let me get out of this little prairie dog area so I can have one hand free for the phone. Oh, they're cute. <laughs> they're cute, huh? They're cuter than you, maybe. Come on. <laughs> He's really interested. Come on. Let's turn down this path and get started with the questions. Um, yeah, another couple of updates to keep you abreast of. Come on. Come on. Um, you're seeing this video with an all new camera. Um, I looked, took a really close look at my camera. I was just kind of inspecting the old one to see if there's like, if there was anything in the USB C port that was, um, you know, if there was like gunk in there or something that was causing a poor connection between the receiver and the camera and a while ago I had lost there's like a little flip cover that goes over the USB-C port and I had lost that months ago and so I just you know put the camera in my filming bag just toss it in there and something chipped the USB port USB-C port the you know little piece of plastic in there with the connectors. The connectors looked bent and there was a chip missing out of it and I hadn't noticed that. And I think that's what was causing the poor connection and the screeching and all of that stuff. So it wasn't the receiver. It's not the microphones. I think the camera. I broke my camera essentially <laughs> because I wasn't keeping it capped. So I broke down and went and got a, the, a new camera. Um, so the old one was the DJI Action 3, and this is now the DJI Action 4 that just came out, um, I want to say about like eight or nine months ago. So it's the new updated version. So apparently it's supposed to have better filming, um, filming abilities. So you should, we're seeing this, as long as I can upload in that quality, this is in 4K 
and it's supposed to have much better image stabilization. So you'll have to let me know how this looks. If it looks clearer or crisper or less bouncy, you'll have to let me know. Um, I'm still using the old microphone setup, but you know me, I started researching, and I think I mentioned this in a previous vlog, there's a new version of these mics that came out. And what I didn't realize is that the new microphones, rather than having to physically plug them into the camera, you can connect them to this new camera via Bluetooth. So then I won't have to plug anything in. I can just clip the mic to me and, and have it feeding to the transmitter and the transmitter is just talking via Bluetooth. So I don't have to worry about having something plugged in or jostling it or, um, or chipping the, the port or anything. It all just happens completely wirelessly, which is really cool. So I was researching that and I was like, um, I guess you're getting yourself a 10 month early Christmas gift. So I got a new camera and a new mic set up. So the mics will be here later today, but I figured I'll film with this while we're out here today. So upgrading the stuff for the channel. That's what I'm going to call this. How's it going? Good. How are you? You're good. Good. Um, I'm calling it upgrading the channel. <laughs> So hopefully it looks clear um, going forward after the mics get here. Hopefully the mic sound will be a lot more consistent and crisp with less, less skipping and stuff and just be a little bit clearer. Um, I did notice um, we did some filming yesterday. I'm probably just going to turn it into a whip and jam or just not use it. Um, we started a walk and it immediately started snowing but it was kind of wet sleety snow so the and the temperature dipped to like 19 degrees and so i um the mics the batteries they once they get cold they just turn off so i'm hoping these new microphones don't do that but we'll see so i have the mic tucked up against my chest right now it's definitely a lot warmer today it's like in the high 30s low 40s um, but I have it right up against my chest to try to keep it warm so it doesn't, doesn't zap the battery. It's funny because it doesn't drain the battery when it gets that cold. It just, it just temporarily turns off and then it warms up again and it's like, I have full battery. And it's like, hey, that's not what you said earlier. But yeah, when we were filming yesterday, I looked down and the microphone was covered in snow and had frost on it and it was not working <laughs> so i just have to be careful about that but anyway um i have no idea where we're going we're just walking i'm just gonna walk and respond to comments and then i'll figure out how to get back to the car <laughs> when we're all done i'm hoping i see a little path over here i wonder if i can cross that'll be pretty but yeah, we're just in a neighborhood that I'm not super familiar with. It's in Littleton, Colorado, and I have no idea where we are. But anyway, so yeah, thanks so much for being here. We're going to respond to comments, try to get as many done as possible. Um, we're still looking good as far as recording. Perfect. I'll keep checking that sporadically. But yeah, so um, I'm going to go to my oldest comments. First, let's see if I can do that. Here we go. Okay, come on. Oldest comments first, and then we'll try to get through as many as we can, um, given how much battery I have and time and everything. Um, and then we'll go from there. Look at those little puppies. Hey, cute. Those are some cute dogs, huh? Oh. They don't seem like they like you. <laughs> Come on. That's okay. Come on. They're little teeny tiny dogs compared to him. That was funny. Um, at the pet store, they had a scale. So you can, um, you can weigh your dog. And he is 84 pounds. He is a big... Big old dog. <laughs> it's definitely on the large size. 
But anyway, okay, let's get to it. So responding to your comments, I think this is part eight now. Um, in regards to my unboxing of Path of Light by Jenny Lee, um, I'll just read all the comments for that video and then I'll just let you know when we're switching. Uh, someone's commenting on a different video and back and forth, um, but you, you'll get a feel for it. This side, nope. Actually, I guess if you want to... Do you want to cross the street? We can do that. Um, okay, so in regards to my unboxing of Path of Light by Jenny Lee, Mia over at Mia's Life with KFS said, pretty artwork. Even though it isn't on my radar, I still think it's beautiful. Thank you so much. I appreciate you watching that unboxing. Yeah, that image is one of my favorites, and Jenny Lee is definitely a upcoming favorite artist of mine, for sure. Um, Catherine Hauserman said um, the red arch is called a Tori shrine. Tori, symbolic gateway making the entrance to the sacred precincts of the Shinto shrine in Japan. Oh, interesting. Um, the Tori, which has many variations, characteristically consists of two cylindrical vertical posts topped by a crosswise rectangular beam extending beyond the posts on either side and a second crosswise beam a short distance below the first. Some Authorities relate the Tori to the Indian gateway arch, the Tirana, which reached Japan with the spread of Buddhism. Others connect the Tori with traditional gates in Manchuria and elsewhere in China. The Tori, often painted in bright red, dem um, uh, um, demarcates, sorry. Um, okay, so the Tori, often painted in bright red, demarcates the boundary between the sacred space of the shrine and ordinary space. Tori also identify other sacred spots, such as a mountain or a rock. Thank you so much, Catherine, for the, the brief history lesson. That's awesome. I had mentioned in that unboxing that I didn't know what those arches were called, and so now I know. That's very interesting. I see them all the time. I just never knew what the significance was or, you know, anything like that. So I appreciate you sharing. That's very, very helpful. Thank you. Um, Jennifer Murray said, very pretty. I'm just getting out of my dark canvas phase now. I am fixated on more pastel vibe, vibes of color palettes, but this is a beautiful, calming piece of art. Nice. Yeah, it really is. It's super calming. I can't wait to get started on that, but I've got, got a lot of plans already in place for upcoming projects and whips and stuff, so I'm not sure when I'll get to that. And then Bella LaLuna said, this one is also on my wish list, although I am fighting the urge to go after one of the mystery kits that is supposed to drop tomorrow. I forget, because this is going back two weeks, I forget which kit, mystery kits, are released, so you'll have to give me more info. I forget. Um, I want to wait until next week after my birthday points drop to cash in some points. In typical fashion, though, DAC is really making it difficult for me. <laughs> yeah, they make it hard. They have some beautiful images. I was safe. I, I, some people say I'm safe this week. I don't know what the, what the terminology is supposed to be, but there wasn't anything in, this, in today's release that I was particularly interested in, um, which was a good thing because I've been purchasing... <laughs> A lot from Diamond Art Club. I did get, uh, they had a re-release this week, or a, yeah, uh, stock, restock, and they restocked Seeding Imagination from You May Art, so I snagged that, and then of course I needed a second kit for free shipping and to use some points, so I got Pride by JoJo's Arts. That one's been one that I've thought was really interesting. And um, it's a round, so I was like, okay, I can do that. So I've got Pride from JoJo's Art and Seeding Imagination from You May Art on their way. Um, in regards to my finish and review of Borealis from Henry Clive, Partha Narajan said, wow, I love this DP, your hard work shows. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. And then going back to my unboxing of Path of, Path of Light from Jenny Lee, Diamond Painting with the Besties said, this is super pretty. I didn't get it yet. The arch you're talking about is, is called a tori. It's a traditional Japanese gate, and they are usually outside the entrance or in a Shinto shrine. They also have them in parks. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm now that I know, I'm in a, it has like a little bit of an extra special meeting, so I appreciate the explanation. Thank you so much for the comment. And then 
Sarah Barden said, this is beautiful, Anthony. It's on my radar to pick up at some point. I can't wait to see you work on it. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and then in regards to my whip and chat from January 31st, responding to your comments, part seven, Mia said, if I remember correctly, DAC said when flower delivery came out that a new renderer had done it and nobody had checked. So the size and rendering wasn't what they wanted. Therefore, it would be discontinued fast and a version two would come out as soon as possible. See, I told you there'd be a ton of comments from me. Please give us a tour of your new crib. Thank you so much for the explanation. Um, yeah, I had mentioned that I, I had a feeling that Diamond Art Club had um, had discontinued that kit and re-released it because they weren't happy with how the rendering turned out, but I didn't know the full story. So thank you so much for that info. And as far as the tour of the new place, if you pop over to, um, to my most recent vlog, the one that went up before this, um, it, I think it says tour of golden in the thumbnail. I give a brief little walk around of the house. So you can go take a look at that there if you so choose. Um, so yeah, I'll, I might do a more intense tour of the house at some point, maybe with pictures instead of a walk around. But I think that short little clip at the beginning of my vlog gives you a pretty good look at the new place. So go and take a look. And then in regards to my whip and chat from December 18th, responding to your comments, part three, uh, Felicia said, hi, Anthony, I'm really enjoying these whip and chats. It's nice having company while diamond painting. Awesome. Well, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Okie dokie. And then in response to my whip and chat, uh, responding to your comments, part seven, we've got Bella Luna with a few comments. So I'll read through those. Um, she said, if anyone knows anything about cr counted cross stitch, they would understand cross stitch conversions. I started out with counted cross stitch and never knew they had stamped cross stitch patterns. Doing a cross stitch conversion is in my bucket list, but I need to find the right pattern for it. Um, let's see. Not all cross stitch translates to diamond painting effectively. Yeah, I think there's like different stitch counts and stuff that might impact um, the, the right spacing and sizing for a diamond painting. I think the right one that you're supposed to look for is like a 10 10 count or something, which means 10 stitches per centimeter, which is the same as most diamond paintings. I think 10, 10 diamonds. I don't know. I forget the, I forget that conversion, but yeah, there's a specific style of cross stitch pattern or sizing that works best. Oops. Um, Bella Luna goes on to say, I'm so looking forward to topics of conversation regarding question of reality. Yeah, that, uh, that paint along will be coming this fall now that we've got the Jaded Jamboree in April and May. So stay tuned for that. And then she said, okay, I don't think you need to buy any more putty. You have enough for at least 10 years. Yeah, I do. I have a huge collection of Mary Mud and um, I showed it on that whip and chat, I think. And yeah, I've got plenty to last me for a long, long time. <laughs> so, and Mary hasn't reopened her shop since um, going on kind of maternity leave, essentially. So it's been giving me a break from buying new putty. <laughs> so thank you so much for all the comments. I appreciate it. Make sure we're still good there. Yep, we are. Michelle Callender said, your whip and chats are so entertaining. I love the long ones. I couldn't stop laughing when you said, yo, 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 little diamonds, best of luck on your move. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Yeah, the move went well. And yeah, I think there's a couple people in this comment thread that mentioned they can't get little diamonds out of their head. But yeah, it sounds like a rapper to me. <laughs> um, and then Leanne Palumbo said, thanks for keeping me company again. I think you're probably moving today, so I hope it goes smooth. Thank you so much. And yeah, it went, it went well. I slipped, I slipped in the snow once and banged my knee, but it's all healed up now. Bruising's gone, all of that good stuff. So we're fine. But other than that little snafu, things went well. And then Lisa Noof said, good luck with your move today, Anthony. Hope the previous tenants left the place in good shape for you. Yep, they did. Um, I was just being a little worry wart, but yeah, they left everything pretty, pretty clean. Now I just have to go get the rest of my stuff out of the garage at my old place. Spencer just sent me a text message saying that he cleared a path for me. So we'll see if that's the case. I'll probably go over there this afternoon. 
Um, and then uh, um, Alley Cat. And I, the reason I know that it's Alley Cat and not Alicia is from an upcoming comment because I had read it earlier. Um, but Alley Cat said, Happy move day. Hope all goes smoothly. Make sure Apollo pulls his weight. <laughs> yeah, he, he definitely helped in the sense that when I moved his box of toys over to the new place, he went ahead and scattered them all over the house and put them in their, their, their appropriate hiding spots. So he did his job. <laughs> um, and then in regards to my unboxing of The Last Supper by Jaded Gem Shop, NC Mom Life says, if you ever do decide to de-stash, please let me know. I, I've purchased Dust Till Dawn and The Kiss From You. So thank you so much for participating in my de-stash last year. Um, I don't have anything in my stash right now that I'm looking to, to de-stash. I've kind of narrowed it down, even though I have a big stash. Um, I went from 80 something kits, I think. No, I think I went from like 111 or 120 kits and now I'm down to somewhere in the 80 range. So I've kind of whittled it down to the kits that I really do intend on working on and I don't think I'd ever de-stash. However, um, especially Last Supper, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> Um, it's going to be a really long project, but it's one I intend on working on. Um, but if you are in love with The Last Supper from Jaded Gem Shop, right now, until May 31st, Jade is offering 20% off of all of her kits for the Jaded Jamboree. So if you want a little discount and getting a new one for yourself, you can head over there and use the code JADEDJAMBOREE20 to get 20% off The Last Supper, if, you, if you'd like. Um, so yeah. And then going back to my whip and chat, responding to your comments, part seven, Jess Diamond Paints said, good luck with your move. Thank you. I appreciate it. And then coming back to my unboxing of Path of Light by Jenny Lee, Von Kaiser said, I was going to be satisfied with Heaven's Gate, but I think I'll have to get this too. There seems to be more color than I was expecting. I do have birthday points coming up. Oh yeah, go for it. If you've got the, uh, the birthday points and that's still in stock, that's a beautiful canvas, totally worth snagging if you can. And then um, going back to my whip and chat, responding to your comments, part seven, uh, Barb Paisley said, never thought I, I would have, I nev never would have thought I could listen to someone talking about comments for two and a half hours. <laughs> me either, me either. <laughs> Yet I did and loved it. Best of luck to you in your new place. Do you plan on having another D stash in the future? I really enjoyed the last one. Um, thank you so much for the comment. <laughs> Thank you for watching that that whole video. Yeah, two and a half hours is a is a big time commitment as far as watching videos for sure. So I appreciate it. And um, as far as the D-Stash goes, I don't have one planned. If I do have one at some point in the future, of course, I will put up an announcement on Instagram and on my community tab on YouTube. But if there is something in my stash that you saw from like a previous stash video that you want to at least, you know, ask and see if I'd be willing to de-stash it, just let me know. You know, I, I, I'll, I'm happy to take those requests on a case-by-case -case basis and see if we can work something out. And if anything, I can at least point you in the direction of the shop and check for you to see if it's still in stock or help you look stuff up. So feel free to let me know if there is something in particular, but at the, at the time of filming this, no, I don't have any plans on doing a D stash anytime soon, but thank you for the comment. And then Loba Ca uh, Crafts said, new subscriber, longtime follower on IG. Well, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I definitely wanted the Bella Art de Nicole or Mooney May trays, but my first set from Nix's Notions have been my go-to and they're such good quality, so I never really needed to purchase more. Thank you so much for the comment. Um, this is another one that I did see previously, and so I was like, am I going to tell the story? Am I not going to tell the story? Um, but I'm going to go ahead and tell it. I've mentioned it this kind of in passing in previous videos. I don't think I've told the full story or all of the details, but um, I think I'm comfortable talking about it now. I think back then I was just not super willing to like disclose or talk about any sort of like scuttlebutt or, you know, things that I saw happen and made me make certain decisions or not, but I'll go ahead and talk about it. So when I very first started diamond painting, back in 2022, 
there was a few, you know, just like a lot of us, there was a few content creators that popped up on my YouTube when I searched like diamond painting and stuff that kind of got me started in the social aspect of, of all of this. So of course, Rachel Ray, Mrs. Coffee, Katie over at Diamonds and Washi, Lindsay over at Emeralds and Fairy Lights, um, I think Sky over at, I think it's The Hobbyist Life, and um, Nyx, Nyx Dark Sky, Nyx's Notions. And so I started watching a lot of their content and realized that Nyx does lives, I think it's every Saturday night. And so I started hopping on her lives and I, I enjoy them. I do enjoy or enjoyed her live streams. A lot of energy, some sass, some funkiness. She's just a really qu cool, like quirky, interesting character for sure. And so I was, you know, those, those were the first live streams I ever commented or was on and participated in and just got a lot of engagement from her, which was really nice. And, um, and all of that stuff. So then, you know, during those lives, I would hear a lot about her trays and she'd do giveaways and stuff. And so Nix's Notions were, were the first trays that I ever purchased that weren't either from Amazon or just came in the diamond painting kits. And I really liked them. I really liked them. Um, the shorter, I don't, she has names for all the different trays that she carries. So I don't remember all of the names, but there was a large tray with a with shorter walls. And I really like those. They're super sturdy, nice thick walls, all of that good stuff. Totally fine. And I loved how slippery her filament is. So the diamonds really slide well. So I liked those. I started placing a lot of orders with Nix's Notions. I think I probably placed like six or eight orders in that first, um, you know, year of diamond painting. And then, um, so I, I got a variety of her different sizes. She had come out with um, ones that had a taller wall on them. And so I had all those. Um, I did run into one issue one time. Um, I ordered one of her taller, a couple of her taller trays, the, the taller wall trays uh, during the summer. And by the time they got to me, they were kind of partially melted and warped really bad. And I tried fixing them myself, but it, they just, they were just really warped. She was really quick on the, quick on the response to my email and sent me some new ones right away. So good customer service on that aspect too. Like no real complaints about the product itself. Um, but then um, I finally got my hands on my first Mooney made trays and those really blew me away. I just really liked the, um, the wall height on those. They're kind of in between Nix's shorter walls and the taller ones. It's a nice middle ground because sometimes with the Nix's Notions shorter wall trays, if I gave it too hard of a shake, some of the drills would come flying out. Um, so, um, so yeah, I, uh, I, and the tall ones were a little too tall. Like I felt like I kept catching my diamond painting pen on the edge of the tray when I was trying to place drills. So the Mooney made trays are like the perfect in between height for me. So I really fell in love with them and I fell in love with the color, the colors of the filaments that Mooney made offers. I just found them to be a little bit more interesting. So I ended up going with, or I ended up really liking the Mooney made trays and decided there's a dog off leash that's following us. It's pretty far behind, but its owners are not, I don't see any owners. It just came running out of a yard. Uh, it turned around. Uh, that's, that's a little concerning. There's cars and stuff driving by. Um, but anyway, so let's see how we're looking. Battery's still doing okay. Um, so anyway, one of my very first um, like product videos that I was going to put up was a comparison between my Nix's Notion trays and my Mooney made trays. And I was going to do it as a premiere. I picked like eight different categories to judge them on. And if I found that one was better than the other, then it got a point. And whoever had the most points at the end was going to be my pick for favorite, my personal favorite tray. And I'll, I'll just say that at the end of the day, Mooney made one. I think it was two points ahead for just like how I liked the product at the end of the day. 
Um, of course, Nick's, Nick's notions had a couple of points ahead as far as how accessible they are, easy to order, wait time, all of that, all of that stuff, and pricing. But just quality, fit, finish, a couple other things just put Mooney Made ahead for me. And so those are the trades that I've been pretty much sticking with ever since. Um, but I went to go post that premiere. I was going to be in the chat to answer any questions that people had. And I posted on Instagram that I was going to be doing this head-to-head -head Mooney Made versus Nix's Notions video coming soon. And so I posted that on my Instagram. And shortly thereafter, uh, Mooney Made reached out to me and was like, hey, um, I'm not sure if you know the story between um, us or me and Nix's Notions, but I'd prefer if you if you didn't put a video up comparing our two products. And so, of course, me being me and not wanting to let shops or anyone really dictate the type of content I put up, I got a little defensive and I was like, you know, I, I'm, I can, sh I'm, I'm free to share anything I want to about products I purchased. I mean, I paid you for these trays. Um, and so as a consumer, I'm within my rights to talk about my experience and compare and contrast between other companies. Like, I don't see what the big deal is. So I did get a little defensive, like, you don't get to tell me what I can and can't post. Um, but, you know, I, I was, you know, very kind and courteous and I was like, okay, I, I understand. Um, or I, I, you know, I hear you, but if, if you're asking me not to post this video, I'm going to need some more context. Like I'm not going to pull this video based on he said, she said, or scuttlebutt or randomness. You know, I need to know whatever you can share with me. That way I have a better understanding of the situation and then I'll make my decision, but I'm not going to make any promises. I'm, I'm not taking sides or playing loyalty towards one shop versus another. That's just not my, that's not my style and that's not what I'm going to do. So Mooney Mae did share a video with me that she had posted when all of this stuff had happened. And it was before I had even started diamond painting. And it's no longer on her page. It's, it's a video that's been taken down. But essentially, she had responded to this stuff that had happened between her and Nyx and shared a lot of facts and figures, some direct screenshots of emails that Nyx had sent to her, and they were really nasty. Um, I won't go into all the details, A, because I don't, I don't know, I don't remember all of that stuff verbatim. Um, but essentially, um, Mooney Maid had had some concerns, and a lot of other crafters had some concerns that Nyx had used her same um, printing pattern, or whatever it's called, the code, to make her own trays. Um, with some other adjustments, including like the thickness of the walls and all of that stuff. Um, she made some minor adjustments, made it her own, but the, the core code or pattern was essentially the same. And so that was the rumor going around, um, and apparently Nyx did not take super kindly to being accused of, you know, copying or stealing, which is understandable. But how she went about reaching out to Mooney Maid was just really uncalled for. Um, essentially just said, you know, um, that her business was so successful because Mooney Maid was so bad at... Um, bad at stocking her stuff and making everyone wait for so long and being on wait lists and never being able to get her trays. Nyx was able to capitalize on Mooney Maid's poor business practices and create a really strong business off of her shortfalls, which I thought was in really poor taste. You know, even if she believes that's the case, that's really rude to say to another business owner. And then she started some name calling. She called Mooney Maid a I don't even know what this means, but she called her an apple pie face and called her naive and like a silly little girl and blah, 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 blah. Like she's too young and dumb to to run a business. I just didn't like her, her um, aggressive, poor attitude. Um, and once again, you know, I'm sure she felt hurt um, that people were claiming that she had stolen 
um, Mooney Maid's printing pattern or whatever you call it and was on the defense, but to lash out like that and just be cruel, um, I didn't care for that. So I made the personal choice after seeing that to not post that video comparing the two products. And at the end of the day, regardless of what happened between those two, Mooney Maid's trays were still my favorite. You know, I had already come to that conclusion. So I just decided to no longer feature Nix's Notions trays on my channel. And I will continue to not um, support her shop for that reason, even though Nix was very kind to me um, personally. But I think it's it's one of those one of those personality types where when you're on their good side, you're best of friends. But if you get on her bad side, like watch out, you know. <laughs> um, and I think I had even reached out to Nix shortly thereafter, just seeing if she had anything to say about the situation or wanted to comment on it and she never responded to me. So I think it's one of those things that she wishes, she wanted to just go away, pretend it never happened. And I never saw any sort of like acknowledgement that what she wrote was, you know, reactionary or in the heat of the moment or, you know, she regrets saying anything that she said. I never saw anything like that. So I just decided to take a step, step back from engaging with her, I stopped attending her lives, and I haven't really seen anything from her of her in over a year. Um, so I don't know what's really going on with her. I, I hope everything's well, but I just, I made a personal decision just to kind of, you know, kind of take a different path, which I think is totally fine. Apollo, let's go over here. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what happened there. But that's not to say that you shouldn't support her or purchase her products. Once again, for the piece of plastic that her trays and all of those 3D printed trays are, it's ve they're very good, very good quality. And second place, in my opinion, compared as to all the different trays that I've tried in the past, they're number two to Mooney made, but just for personal reasons, I choose not to um, support her shop. So yeah, thank you for the comment. I figured I'd tell that story since I don't think I've told it in full on the channel. Um, maybe I have, I don't remember, but thank you. Um, going back to my finish and review of Borealis from Henry Clive, um, Ellie says, hi Anthony. Wow, how pretty is this canvas? I love all the colors. Thank you. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to work on. I need another kit in my life with uh, bright colors like that. And I don't think I'm gonna have one for a little while, <laughs> just with upcoming events and stuff. I see a lot of neutral tones in my future, um, but that's okay. And then um, going back to my finish and review of Her Summoning by Diamond Art Club and Ivy Dullimore, uh, Leah Adams said, hello, I've just purchased this kit and would love to follow your enhancements. Is there any chance you could supply the list of colors you use to enhance this painting? Yeah, of course. So, um, Leah, I think, I think in the description box for that finish, there should be a link to my Google document. I keep record of all of the enhancements I do for all the kits that I do enhance. So there'll be a little thumbnail of the finished image so you know what you're looking at. It'll say Her Summoning by Ivy Dolamore and Diamond Art Club, and it will have a document listing all of the colors I swapped out and what I swapped them out for and where I got them, all of that good stuff. So it's all listed there. If you can't find that Google Doc, um, message me. You can find me on Instagram. You can also email me. My email's in the About section of my channel. So you can message me or email me and I will get you that link. But I'm pretty sure I put it in the description box for that video. So take a look. Um, in regards to my unboxing of Muted Sound by You May Art, Felicia said, thanks for sharing this beautiful kit. I always love seeing what you do with the enhancement drills. Of course, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Um, Going back to my finish and review of Cyber Edo by Roberto Nieto, Felicia said, I think this turned out absolutely fantastic. You did a wonderful job enhancing this canvas. So beautiful. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. That one was a lot of fun. Um, I keep forgetting that I finished that kit because 
I did it over the Christmas holiday and it, I did it in like six days or something like that and then immediately gave it to a friend. So it's kind of one of those out of sight, out of mind things and I keep forgetting that that's something I finished. How about... Good boy, come here. Hi, sweetheart. Say hi to everyone. Oh, big boy. Hi, cutie. Oh, I love you. I love you. But thank you so much for the comment, Felicia. I appreciate it. And then we've got a couple comments in regards to my unboxing of Muted Sound by Yume Art. Michelle Callender said, can't wait to see what you do with this picture to enhance it even more. Thank you. Alish, oh, sorry, Ali Cat said, wow, no 310. Hope your move went smoothly. Yes, it did. And yeah, that kit, surprisingly, even though I consider that like dark, a darker color palette doesn't have any 310. It's a lot of deep blues and 939 and stuff. So very interesting. And then Cheryl said, hi, Anthony, I have this kit. Can't wait to see your finished product. Yeah, I, I will. It's uh, kitted up. It's kitted up, but I just don't know how how or when I'm going to work that into my into my routine for a number of reasons. So the first reason is I when I kitted it up, I made a list of all the enhancement drills I wanted to order from DP with sparklers for it. And by the time I added it, you know, add them all, added them all to my cart was like 140 something dollars worth of enhancement drills. And I was like, Anthony, you like you simply should not be spending <laughs> that much on enhancing one kit. My justification is that it's a gift for my brother, so I do want it to look really nice, but I need to go back through that list and refine that and maybe remove some of the enhancements I had picked. The other reason that it's going to be a while is, um, let's go this way. Good boy. You're being really good today. Oh, speaking of which, I have, what do I have in my pocket for you? <gasps> what is that? Oh my gosh, it's Icelandic herring. Do you want a herring treat? Will you sit for me? Good boy. You got to get that vitamin D. Good boy. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That's so gross. Here you go. Boop. Good boy. Let's stand here so you can eat it and not choke on it. Eat your, eat your treat. Eat your herring treat. You better like those. <laughs> get it. Good boy. Good boy. I'm just gonna hang out for a little bit while he eats his herring treat. Okay, hold on. Um, so yeah, not only do I need to think about those enhancement drills, but I have so many upcoming projects um, or upcoming things going on. He's eating the snow and not the herring, and he's looking at a dog that's walking by. Apollo, that's the snow. Eat your herring. Get it. Get it. You ready? Hup. <laughs> he totally missed it. Mmm. Good boy. Is that tasty? Get your herring treat. This might not be the good environment a good environment for him to try to eat treats because he's very distracted. Come on. Get your treat. Don't make me touch this again, okay? Come here. Come here. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. Okay, let's walk somewhere where you can't hide it. He wants to hide it. <laughs> there he goes. He's crunching it. Oh, is that good? Oh, is that good? <laughs> good boy. Good boy. Eat your treat. Get it. Get it. He ate the head. Are you not going to eat the rest? Okay, maybe it's not the right environment for treats. Come on. Some other dog can have the rest of that. He ate like the the top half of it, like the head and the eyes, but then he left the tail. <laughs> Ugh. Um, okay, so yeah, I have just a lot of events and plans for the rest of the year. We've got, I have the month of March off, and so I'd like to try to get done one of my whips, um, or like to finish one of my whips. I have Summer by Alphonse Mucha going. I have Astronomer from Miles Pinkney, and then I have my mystery kit from Ivy Dolomore. And Moose Ne Lob Moose, my cross-stitch conversion, which will not get done. <laughs> but one of those other three I'd like to get done in March. And then April and May is the Jaded Jamboree. Um, I, I, of course, had to pick up some of those kits because... Or pick up some of the new releases from Jaded Gem Shop because 
they were a collaborative um, effort between me and Jade. I selected, I think, six, six images, and Jade selected four. How do we get out of this little loop without going in the snow? Um, Jade had selected four, so we've got ten, ten images, but the extra cool thing about those is um, Jade will be doing a special edition logo at the top of those canvases that'll say Jaded Gem Shop X single in placing. And then she had a really cool idea to put a um, blue border around her kits instead of her jade colored one because my logo is like a navy blue. So they're kind of special edition, limited edition kits to commemorate this event and this collaborative release. So of course I had to get some. So I picked five of the 10. I got um, four of my own and then one that she had selected. Um, I may end up getting more down the road um, as in like the next couple of weeks, but I, I, I thought, oh, sorry, I got, I got four. I got four of the limited edition releases. I got three of my own and one of hers. So there's still six left that I could potentially get, but I think four is, <laughs> they're big, they're big. Um, I, I'll read them off to you, which ones I got. Oh, we came back to the treats. We got it. Ooh, that's crunchy. That sounds delicious. Do you like that? Good boy. All right, he got the rest of it, so that's good. Um, let me hop over to Jaded Gem Shop and I'll let you know which ones I selected. Da, da, da. Let's check. The camera's down to 13% battery, so um, I may need to switch that here soon. Uh, Jaded Gem Shop. I'm just going to take a look at what I ordered and in what size, so you know. Go to my account. So I got the Chasm of Colorado by Thomas Moran. That's a, I got it in squares and I got it in 70 by 120 centimeters. That kit can get as big as 80 by 140, but the 70 by 120 um, looked like a, a really nice rendering, plenty of clarity in that size. So I think that'll be plenty big. Um, so 70 by 120 for that one. I also snagged The Tree of Life by Gustav Klimt. I got that in round because I think all of that gold and those pops of color um, will give me the opportunity to really enhance that kit. I feel like a lot of Gustav Klimt's images enhance really well and can handle sparklers really well. And so I got that in the largest size, 80 by 130 in round. So once that comes in, that's more enhancement drills that I'm gonna have to have to keep an eye or have to start shopping for. But I got that one. I also got All is Vanity, and that was one of Jade's selections. I got that in square because it is a black and white image, so I wanted to get as much detail as possible. And I got that in the 70 by 90. You can get it as big as 80 by 100, but the 70 by 90 rendering looked good to me. So I snagged that, and then I got the poster for Gizmonda. It's the Sarah, I think it's Gerhard, Sarah Gerhard um, Alphonse Mucha image. And I got that one in round. Um, I, I tend to like Alphonse Mucha panels in round. I think it adds a little softness um, and a little bit more of like some swoop, kind of, there's a lot of curvature to his artwork and stuff and I just find for for me personally I find that round drills just speak to that a little bit better and so I got that in the 60 by 180 centimeter size which is the biggest that comes in if you were to get it in square you could absolutely go smaller I'm sure you could go smaller in the round too but I like a big I like big projects so I got it in the largest size there and then I got the uh, Phoenix Glaring in All Directions by Katsushiku, Katsushika Hokusai. And I got that in square because there's a lot of detail in that. So I wanted to maximize 
my opportunity for detail and I got that in the 70 by 70. That rendering looked really good. You can get it as big as 80 by 80 if you choose, but I went one size smaller. Thought it looked fine. So, and that's in square. So that's one, two, three, four. Oh, I did get five. So those are the five that I got. I also got a custom um, that I will not share the details because I want it to be a surprise. Um, when it comes in, I'll of course do the unboxing. It's not a mystery kit or anything. It's just a custom image that I had turned into a diamond painting. And that's a 70 by 95 square, but I'll share that with you when it comes in because I'm really excited about that one. So anyway, all of that is just to say that between Jaded Jamboree, April and May, Summer with the Masters, June and July, um, I'm going to have plenty of projects to do for those events. So that put me, puts me all the way out until August. I'll have August off, so I might be able to get another whip done. And then September and October will most likely, don't quote me, but most likely be the question of reality event. And so that puts me all the way into November before I can start looking at uh, kitting up some new stuff. And even then, I'd like to make a little bit of progress on my cross-stitch conversion. So I'm like, uh, it seems like I'm probably not going to be opening any new kits for the rest of the year, which is crazy to think of like how big my stash is and the fact that I might not be touching any of that for a whole year is... Uh, what have I done? <laughs> but anyway, Cheryl, yeah, um, we'll, we'll get to that one eventually. Um, it looks like we're at 5% battery, so I'm going to go ahead and stop us so I can swap the, um, swap the batteries and we'll go from there. So one second. little legs. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Okay. All right. We shall continue. Um, the other thing about recording in 4K is it eats up my uh, storage, my little fla flash drives, whatever you want to, I forget what you call them. Storage disks? <laughs> Storage cards? Why can't I think of the right name? I have two 256 gigabyte storage cards, and usually when I'm recording in 1080p, it's like, oh, you can record for 16 hours. And now that I have it set to 4K, it's like, you can record for three hours. <laughs> but luckily, I have the second one in here. Not that I think we're going to be going for another three hours, but if we ever needed to go in the future, we could technically film eight hours in 4K if I had enough batteries to do that. Um, but I, I don't. <laughs> so you're lucky. <laughs> um, okay, uh, going back to my whip and chat, responding to your comments, part seven. Hooks Books Podcast said, really enjoyed listening while I'm working on uh, Threads of the Universe. Have You have a lovely voice to listen to. Hope your move went well. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, the move went really well. I have never heard of Threads of the Universe. I'll have to look that up. Uh, let's just make sure audio. Yep, that all looks good. It does something weird. Oh, it's showing me at the top. Um that it is recording my voice. Hold on. Cool. Wow. There, this new camera has some different, different features. It literally looks identical to the old camera, but it has a bigger screen, a bigger uh, sensor, like camera sensor on the front, and has some other stuff. But luckily, all my other stuff works with it. My old batteries, my old harness, the thing that I have around my chest that you're on. Um, all of that stuff was the same, which is nice. And they have to get everything new. Um, so thank you so much, Hooks Books Podcast. I appreciate it. Uh, Teresa said, hello, can you share the link for the metal multi-placer you used from Amazon? Yes, I can. Um, I for, I've linked it before in previous videos. I just don't remember which ones. So I will try to put it in the description box of this video. If you don't see it, if I have, if editing Anthony has forgotten to do that, um, once again, shoot me a message on Instagram if you have it, or shoot me an email and just say, hey, Anthony, I need that link, and I will get it to you, but I will try to include it in the description box. Um, going back to my unboxing of Muted Sound by You May Art, Sparkling Spectrumite. Hi, Hannah, said this is such a great kit. Yes, I know, it's awesome. And then Lisa said, I think your neon drills will look beautiful on this image and make it pop. Yeah, I think so too. 
I need to, I need to get back into that um, storage container and kind of rechart my, or kind of look at some different selections so I'm not spending quite as much on enhancements. Um, and then in regards to my unboxing of Flower Delivery by You May Art, Sarah Barden said, love this kit, Anthony. The color palette is amazing and so is the art. I really hope they continue to stock this kit as I missed it both times now. Oh no, I would really like to have it. I can't wait to see you finish this one. Thank you for sharing. Of course, thank you so much for, uh, for watching and for the comment, I appreciate it. And then Sarah said in regards to my finish and review of Borealis, another awesome finish. Love the unique paintings you find to work on. You did a beautiful job. Oh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, there are um, a lot of really unique kits over on Jaded Gem Shop. So if you're looking for some kind of different styles, some oddball images to, to work on, Jade has such a huge variety. It's kind of nuts how many, um, how much, how, how varied of her um, how varied her styles are and different types of artwork. She has so much to offer there. So if you are looking for something a little different, not the norm, not the, not stuff that you typically see, um, Jaded Gem Shop is a really good place to peruse. So if you haven't, I'd go take a look. And then in regards to my whip and chat, responding to your comments, part six, um, Michelle, um, Michelle Mobs said, I love the open discussion. Come on. I love the open discussion on AI artwork. I'm just getting back into watching DP content again and had to unsubscribe to a creator who is being super one-sided and negative about the companies who use AI artists. Interesting. You'll have to, um, if you're comfortable sharing, I, I like to stay in the know of what other people's opinions are so I can better educate myself on what some concerns are from other folks. And if people share those sentiments, try to do some research to better understand, you know, what their concerns are and see if I can provide any perspective or information on them. So if you are comfortable, feel free to message me once again, Instagram, send me an email um, so I can check out those videos just so I'm in the know of like, what are people's concerns? You know, can I help to shed some light or validate those concerns or, you know, whatever. And it's just good for me to know too, so I can do better research and be more, uh, more mindful of, you know, what's, what's going on out there. So feel free to share that with me if you don't mind, because I'm not super up on other content creators <laughs> videos and content. I have like three or four that I listen to and that's pretty much it these days. Um, I've really kind of curated the content I listen to to be stuff that I really, really like. So um, Jeffrey Morrison over at Echoes of Color is a favorite. I'm always, I always keep up with his whip and chats. Katie over at Diamonds and Washi and um, Mia over at Mia's Life with KFS. And that's, I guess that's the main three that I listen to. Hannah over at Sparkling Spectrumite, I try to keep up with her stuff as well. Um, but outside of that, uh, that I, that's it. <laughs> to be completely honest, of course, if I'm do it, if I'm doing a long diamond painting or session or something, I'll let videos, I'll let YouTube just kind of play the next recommended video, and I'll listen along for a while. But as far as like making sure I'm up to date on stuff. Those are kind of the four that I <laughs> listen to most often. So anyway, um, I admit that I don't know everything about the topic, but I just didn't see a productive conversation happening. It's refreshing to hear someone say, I want to learn more because I do too. Looking forward to continuing to learn together and we'll definitely be catching up on your content. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I, I... I live in the gray area along with the topic itself. You know, I think a lot of people want it to be very black and white. All AI art and AI artists are bad or good or I shouldn't or should buy them. And it's just not that simple. Um, there's so much nuance to this topic and there's so many different facets of what AI means and how it's used in so many different ways that it's hard to just pin it down and say, in any use case, it's a bad thing 
or in all use cases, it's a good thing. And I'm somewhere in between. And I think um, it comes, a lot of it comes down to how it's being used and not the tool itself, you know? Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of where I fall. And um, I, I want to learn more. I want to gain more perspective and make sure that I'm not just speaking from, you know, I'm not just speaking from wanting to support more traditional digital artists or not, or feeling like I need to protect or defend some artists that I really love. I'm trying to come from it from like a, I'm trying to look at it from as many different angles as possible. Um, the one thing that I do think I, you know, I'll stand firmly with is no matter how you feel about AI artwork or AI artist, it doesn't mean that it's okay to attack them or chastise them on social media, you know, hopping onto a diamond painting Facebook group and talking about how much you hate those artists and how much they're thieves and stealing and how their artwork is fake or not valid or not quote unquote real. Um, that's where I really take issue is how we're treating people versus the actual topic of AI art itself. I think um, we've just we've just gotten into this mode of if you don't like something that someone's doing, then you get to treat them like they're they're beneath you or subhuman or they have no they have no heart to so when you say things that are really cruel and mean, it doesn't matter because they're heartless people, you know. So that's the type of thing that really gets under my skin and I'm trying to rally against is I don't care. I really, you know, don't feel one way or you know, I don't mind how you feel. You can have whatever opinion you want, but it's how you treat other people that that is the important piece to me. Have your opinions, but that doesn't mean that somebody um it's to deal with your wrath because you don't like what they're doing. Um, you know, nothing that they're doing is illegal. I, I personally don't think that a lot of the artists that create AI artwork in the diamond painting space are being malicious or unethical. So they, they shouldn't be treated as such. Um, so that's kind of where I come from on that, that matter. But I want to continue to learn about AI artwork in the process and in fact, um, I just started using Midjourney myself for the first time last week or earlier this week um, to start um, experimenting it with myself and see what the process actually looks like and how hard or easy is it really to recreate stuff or create stuff that might be commercially viable and just, you know, and see what it actually takes to create something that looks really good or looks like something that could be turned into a diamond painting. So we'll see, I, I'll have another update for you. I'll probably be posting a video here in the next few weeks called like my journey with mid journey <laughs> or my mid journey or something. I'll create some sort of fun name. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'll be creating some content around that soon. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for the comment. I appreciate it. And I hope you do feel like this is a this is a space where we can converse about this stuff um, openly and honestly, but also respectfully. Um, so yeah, going back to the unboxing of Flower Delivery by You May Art, Linda Salazar said, this is in my stash too. I love it, but I won't be doing it soon since I just finished Transparent a couple of weeks ago and I've just started still waiting. Um, I still have three more You May Art kits after this, but I want to spread them out. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm in the exact same boat. I feel like I get on a You May kick and then I'm like, okay, we'll do this one and then this one and then this one. But yeah, I have to, I have to pace myself with the You May Arts. So Muted Sound will be my next one. And then I have, I don't know, like six or seven others that I need to <laughs> slowly work in into my, my routine. I still have, um, still waiting. Under the Stairs, Sakura Festival, um, Flower Delivery. I still have a bunch to do. So yeah, I'm right there with you. Linda also said in regards to my unboxing of Muted Sound, hi, Anthony, not sure if you've ever discussed this idea. Um, and I know it'd be easier said than done, but would you consider doing one kit twice? An example would be doing one very enhanced version and then the other version straight out of the box. I would love to see a video as well as photo comparisons just to see how much it changes and personalizes the complete look. Oh, complete work, I'm sorry. 
I have one kit, Cyber Edo, that I'm putting off because I don't know if I want to do it as is or but I also get overwhelmed when trying to shop for replacement drills. Anyway, thanks for your videos. They are fun to listen to while I diamond paint. Of course, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I would be, I would be open to working on the same kit twice, one enhanced and one not. Um, usually the kits that I enhance are gonna be round drill because I like working with DP with uh, the sparklers from DP with sparklers. They do make sparklers for squares and I'm currently using those on Astronomer, but um, I prefer, or I, I, I like using the round ones a little bit more because then all the drills are round, including the ones I haven't enhanced. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I could go either way. I have an easier time. Let me say that. I have an easier time incorporating enhancement drills onto my round drill kits, and I have an easier time doing that with Diamond Art Club's round drill canvases. Um, I find that their rendering style lends itself a little bit better to enhancing. Um, it, it, they lend themselves to making enhancements easier, I'll say that because they kind of do more of like blocky colors and things are a little bit more, uh, their rendering style is a little bit more cartoon-ish, I guess I'll say. So I have an easier time with Diamond Art Club. So I, I'm happy to do that. And in fact, I'll start trying to search for some kits. If I was gonna do two of the same kit, I'd most likely wanna pick something relatively small but still with a decent amount of colors, so you really can enhance quite a bit. Um, I probably wouldn't do like a little, a little diamonds because a lot of those have pretty minimal color palettes. So I'd wanna do something with a decent amount of colors, but still not a massive canvas. <laughs> but yeah, um, and of course I'd like it to be something that I would enjoy you know, working on so it's not such a slog to do it twice. But yeah, I would do that. Um, I will do some research. Let me see if I can find an image that I'd be willing to do that with. Even if I can find one of those little diamonds kits that has a decent amount of colors, then yeah, I don't see why not. I will, I'll look into it. And if I, if I find one, I will update you on a, f a future vlog. So yeah, thank you. Um, oh, and then as far as Cyber Edo goes, uh, I do have my enhancement lists on that Google Doc for Cyber Edo. So if you do need some inspiration on what to do there, um, go to that finish and review that I did of Cyber Edo and the link to the Google Drive or Google Doc will be in the description box and you can see what I did with Cyber Edo if you need some inspiration. So yeah, thanks so much for the comment, I appreciate it. I'm gonna take a little breathing break real quick. Hold on. Um, so yeah, yesterday when we went on our walk, we did 7.7 uh, miles, and so my feet are already a little bit sore, <laughs> and my legs are a little bit sore, and my, my rumpus is a little bit sore, and now we're probably going to do pretty close to the same by the time we get through this. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, so much walking this week, but that's good. That's good for him, too. He needs the exercise. Um... Okay, moving on, um, going back to my whip and chat, responding to your comments, part seven. Lily, Lily 3 AM said, the weather doesn't make you sick, period. Um, okay, so I think in that, um, in that responding to your comments, a lot of, a few people had said, oh, I can't believe you went out in the cold like that, Anthony, you're gonna get sick. And I think I said that I had underdressed for that walk. So I was like super chilly and there was wind and everyone was like, yeah, don't get yourself sick. So Lily's saying, weather doesn't get you sick. So yeah, I mean, that's true. Um, the, cold, the cold and flu viruses um, don't just suddenly spring to life in cold weather or just exist in the air when things become a certain temperature. So yeah, like I, I, I get that. <laughs> the weather doesn't directly get you sick but it's more of a turn of phrase. It's, it's not as literal as that. It's, it's essentially someone saying, take care of yourself, you know, be kind to yourself, bundle up. Don't, don't, don't be doing dumb stuff like going out in the freezing cold with not enough clothes on, because even though it doesn't directly get you sick, um, 
your body has to go into kind of a survival mode if you're in certain temperatures and your body dips below a certain body temperature, which in and of itself might not get you sick with like cold or flu, but it can um, negatively impact your, your body's ability to fight off viruses. Like it can have a poor impact on your immune response um, because your body's trying to keep itself warm and stay, stay um, at like stasis. So no, the weather doesn't get you sick, but it can play an impact on you getting sick. And also there's things such as um, heat stroke and hypothermia, which are, weren't the type of sickness that I think people were suggesting. But if we wanna play the literal game, um, the weather can make you sick. Uh, weather can cause hypothermia and heat stroke. So you're right and you're wrong. <laughs> so thank you so much for the comment, I appreciate it. Um, Hartana said in regards to that same video, I'm never going to be able to see Lil Diamond's kit release without hearing you in my head now. Yeah, me too. I <laughs> hope the move-in went well. Yeah, it did. Thank you. Um, I, got a, I got a couple from Martith Art. I'm absolutely a sucker for any of her stuff and the UFO cow, uh, cow by Olivia Gallagher. I realized how big most of my kits were and needed some smaller kits so there'll be a nice break. Nice! And from what that is a really big virgin... Virgin Mary. Holy moly, I don't think I've ever seen one that big. That's cool. Um, um, if I remember correctly, the UFO cow is from Jada Gem Shop and Martith Art is licensed with Jada Gem Shop. So if those are all Jada Gem Shop kits, I'd love for you to join us for the Jada Gemberie. So if you haven't heard about that, go take a look at that announcement video. But thank you for the comment. Um, my vlog episode 93, um, Diamonds at Tiffany's said, as a 36-year-old woman who just got back from an adults-only Disneyland trip, I say get on those roller coasters. You will have the best time, and I cannot wait to see you live your dreams and ride all the rides at whatever park you go to. Well, thank you so much for the comment. I really appreciate it. And the all adults Disney trip sounds like exactly what I need. Um, but yeah, I bought my... I bought my flights to Cleveland. It's the weekend of J uh, June 8th. I'm going the 6th, 7th, 8th, and then leaving on the 9th. I haven't gotten my park tickets or hotel just yet because it turns out that Cedar Point does their roller coaster extravaganza on June 8th. I think it's, uh, or 7th, it's Friday the 7th, I think. And so that is a special event that they do at Cedar Point that I had no idea about till I went on their website this week to go get my, um, my hotel room and my park pass. Well, it turns out that they have this special event on that Friday where you buy a, a ticket, a special ticket. I forget how much it is for that one day, but when you get that specific special ticket, you get... Um, extra early access to the roller coasters and to the park in the morning. So not only do you get that, let's keep going this way. Let's go back the way we came, it's quieter. Um, so not only do you get that, you also get um, free um, fountain beverages the entire day. You get a special pa uh, line, light line cutting pass for all uh, for specific roller coasters throughout the day. So essentially it's almost like a tour. So they'll be like, okay, um, they, they, I think they limited, limited it to a thousand um, people last year. So they'll say, all right, now it's time for your group of a hundred to go to Millennium Force. So you all go, you get right on the ride, uh, no muss, no fuss. So, and then it's like, okay, now, the next group of 100 goes to that roller coaster, your group goes here. So of course they're having regular park attendees mixed in there, but they kind of have you scheduled for specific times on specific rides throughout the day to guarantee that you get to ride everything. Um, and they just finished uh, revamping their tallest roller coaster. It's called Top Thrill Dragster. Um, it's now called Top Thrill 2, and they retracked it and did a whole bunch of new stuff, and it's the first year for that. So I'll get to be uh, one of the first folks <laughs> that gets to ride that ride, which is awesome. 
Um, so they have that. I forgot about these little, these little puppies. It's okay. It's okay. They just want to play with you. They think you're cute. <laughs> He's like, yeah, but they sound mean. <laughs> this way. Um, so not only do you get that, but you also get, um, I think, lunch included. And then at the end of the night, um, in the evening, they take everybody out for a dinner cruise around on Lake Erie. So you go on a dinner cruise, you go around the peninsula and get to see the park from the water. They provide dinner. And then when that's done, they have special extended night hours. So you get to ride a couple of the, um, the taller roller coasters after the park has closed in the dead of like at night. I think the park closes at eight that night and then you go on your dinner cruise and then around like nine, nine thirty, they have the the folks that have these special passes get to ride um, Top Thrill Dragster and a couple other taller roller coasters at night, which is really cool. So the tickets don't go on go on sale until April for that. So I'm gonna wait until April to see what that looks like, get that ticket, and then buy the the rest of the buy the rest of my um, trip around that. So I'll just get my hotel tickets around that um, and get my other days at the park around that. Cause I'm going to go to the park for three days. Um, the first day, just depending on when my flight lands, will either be straight to the hotel room in bed, or if it's, if my flight's a morning flight, then I'll spend the day, a part of that day, exploring, riding a few rides, that type of thing. Um, or the reverse, where the day that I leave, if I leave in the morning, then I'll just be getting up, checking out, and going to the airport. Or if it's a night flight, then I'll have that day at the park. So I'm just waiting for those special edition or special tickets to come come out, and then I'll plan the rest of my trip. But um, yeah, plane tickets are at least booked. I forget what my flight times are, so that's why I've I've got to think about how I want it to all work out. And one of my coworkers just got her travel agents like certification or whatever that's called. Um, so she's supposed to be helping me um, with pricing and scheduling and all that stuff. So hopefully she can help me score a deal on the date, the other days that I'm going. If not, I'll just go right on the website and do my own thing. But yeah. I will be going, I promise. And I'll be filming as much as I can. I've been watching a lot of, so you're going to Cedar Point. Here's tips and tricks to have the best day possible. And a lot of people were like, make sure you get the fast pass so you can skip the lines. Um, they have, for $35 a day, you can get a meal plan. And so you can have one entree side um, entree inside every 90 minutes at the park if you so choose to eat that much. Um, but I thought that'd be nice because I am planning on staying on property um, right there next to the park. So I was like, well, I can get up, you know, when the park opens, go to one of the cafes, get a little breakfast or something, you know, ride a bunch of rides, whatever, get lunch. And then right before the park closes and I have to walk back over to the hotel, I'll just get one more meal and take it back to the hotel room with me. Um, so I think that's how I'm gonna plan it. I was like 35 bucks for three meals a day, plus if I'm, if I'm that hungry, um, that's a good deal. So it's not gonna be the most expensive trip ever, ever, which is nice too. But I do wanna get all the like fast pass and lane cutting, like I wanna make the most out of my time there. I don't wanna have to wait in lines too, too long. And so that's why I'm leaving Thursday. And then I forget what my flights are, but I think my flight on Thursday is a morning flight. So then if I get to Cleveland, you know, by 10 or 11 in the morning, get to the park around noon, get my ticket, then that'll give me, you know, noon until 8 p.m. to have a Thursday weekday at the park, which is probably gonna be more quiet, but anyway. I do plan on going. <laughs> um, okay, so 
My finish in, in regards to my finish and review of Lady with the Fan by Gustav Klimt, Lisa Kemp said, I so love your video. Enjoy how you explain why you approach your canvas. Please continue. Thanks again. Of course. Thank you so much for watching. And then in regards to my unboxing of Cutie by a Anastasia Degtiarenko and Diamond Art Club, Bella LaLuna says, 20 question mark? Oh my god, I just lost a diamond in my keyboard <laughs> as I look at my little stash of four DAC, one Dreamer Designs, one Make Market, and six little Amazon budget kits. Not to mention my three whips of two DAC and one Dreamer Designs. I probably won't be buying any more premium kits until Black Friday, so that gives me until November to get what I have done and to get my credit card paid off. Yeah, definitely do that. <laughs> you know, do, do, can, Build your stash as much as you want to build it. But yeah, they also, it's nice to be mindful of, you know, finances and stuff too. We're going to avoid this area. We keep coming, churning back towards the lake, but there's just too many, too many people to have for me to just be squawking on. So we're just going to kind of go around through this neighborhood. Um, yeah, my kit, I, I think I had said I have about 20 that I still have to unbox, let alone what I have already unboxed in my stash. And then with this Jaded Gem Shop stuff coming in, I'll have six more. Um, but yeah, I mean, my only reservation with having like a stash that big, uh, you know, so big is, A, I want to make sure it's stuff that I actually intend on doing and I'm not just purchasing a kit because there's a lot of hype around it and I've been really good about that like there's been a bunch of releases that have come out over the past year or so that everyone's clamoring over but they're not really for me whereas back in 2022 anytime Di Diamond Art Club would come out with a release even if it wasn't necessarily my style but everyone was freaking out about it I had that FOMO and I would just get it you know because it, it seemed like it was popular and I wanted to unbox, you know, the hottest new kit. And I've learned over time that that's not really that important. And just to focus on things that I really like. So for instance, like Golden from All Claire Studios, that was one that was hugely popular. I knew it was going to sell out and I stopped myself from getting it because I was like, I just don't need enough, yet another kit in my stash like like that. Like a square like a big old square with a ton of 310 like I have plenty of those and I always feel like I um am it sometimes it becomes a little bit of a slog doing that much 310 you know so I'm like why am I going to do that to myself I already have a bunch of kits in my stash that are like that that I I keep putting off because I don't want to deal with all that 310 so so yeah I uh I'm trying to be better about that and just focus really on the kits that I love. Um, and then the other thing that I used to do is if a kit released and I thought it would work for an event, no matter what the event was or if I had any intention on actually participating in the event, it would give me an excuse to buy it. So um, for instance, there was an Enos Guerrero kit that came out last year or a couple years ago that was kind of Wizard of Oz themed. And even though Enos Guerrero's kit images are really pretty, not a lot of them I think I would personally enjoy diamond painting just because of the color spread. Like, I love them as artwork, but not to work on them as diamond paintings. But I got that kit like, oh, I'll do that for the Wizard of Oz event, even though I really wasn't thinking I'd participate in that event. Um, I'm not a huge, I'm not like a, fanboy for Wizard of Oz. It doesn't have like a special place in my memory or life. And so it's not really an event that I would normally, you know, I'm happy to support it and stuff, but to set aside all my whips and start this project that A, I'm not particularly interested in for an event that I don't have like a specific connection to, um, it just seemed silly, but I did it anyway. Like any excuse to buy a diamond painting. And now I've kind of gotten over that or gotten past that. So yeah, as long as you're being conscious about what you're collecting. The only other thing that I, I worry about is like, okay, if I really look at my stash, I have probably six, seven years. If I was to stop 
purchasing diamond paintings today and just work on my stash until it's em until it was gone, I'd probably be working on it for like six or seven years until I was done with all of them. Um, I, won I am curious to see the longevity of um, the adhesive, you know, all of that stuff. Like I'm curious to see how long that stuff actually stays good for. Um, and then also diamond, diamond uh, painting companies are constantly coming out with updates and upgrades and changes. So by the time you, I get to those kits, Diamond Art Club might have uh, drills that you can, you can plug your canvas into a wall and the drills have some sort of um, diode or electrode in them that makes them light up. Like who knows what the future holds, like some sort of crazy advancement in diamond painting. So I'm going to have all these outdated, quote unquote, outdated kits or maybe the the drills now have 770 facets or something like that, you know? So I, I think about that too, like, well, I could just wait until this restocks in a few years, hopefully it restocks in a few years, and maybe by then there'll be improvements to the quality or something. So I don't know, I, the, all of those things I think about when I'm trying to make a purchase, but I'm trying to be more selective these days uh, to, to varying degrees of success. <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, but thank you so much for the comment. I appreciate it. Jennifer Murray says, hope the move went well and you and Apollo are getting settled, settled in. Have a great day. Yeah, we're doing good. Thank you so much for the comment. I appreciate it. Michelle Callender says, she's really cute. Yeah, I, I really like that image. I love the, I love the colors. It's just so funky and unique and different. It almost kind of gave me Harley Quinn vibes, but not quite so much. It's a little bit softer than that. And I loved the, the pastels in that, that kit. Um, going back to my unboxing of Muted Sound by Yume Art, Mia's Life with KFS said, it really is a beautiful kit, Anthony. Looking forward to see it, uh, what you will do to it. Oh, thank you so much. And then my entire Diamond Painting Stash 2.0, so that's the one I did in 2022, I think, um, or late 2022, I think. It's, it wasn't my most recent one. But uh, Yagathan said, I love that you show all these big ones. I'm not really interested in small diamond paintings. Yeah, I have a good mix. Um, I obviously lean more towards larger kits, especially when it comes to Jaded Gem Shop. I like the detail. Um, but I try to have some quote unquote medium size kits. So like a 50 by 70 is what I consider like a medium size. I try to keep a few of those handy, but my stash definitely leans more towards really big, you know, like 70 to 90 plus, you know, but yeah, <laughs> just means I'm working on each project for a little bit longer. <laughs> okay, so um, a bunch of these comments are now going to be in regards to my vlog episode 96, uh, which just at the time of filming this just went up a few days ago, I think, or a week ago. Um, so we'll dive into those. Uh, the Diamond Stitcher says, the mic started doing funny things after an hour or a minute 05, but not bad. Sounds like some exciting events coming up. Very neat, uh, the collab with Jada Gem Shop. Yeah, I'm super excited about that. And I did catch that, um, the issues with the audio on that vlog, uh, the Diamond Stitcher. I So how I tried to get that one to work is I recorded the audio um, independently from the camera because I was just having those audio issues with the can the the microphone doing that screeching or the receiver doing that screeching so um, I just had the mic recording and for whatever reason the microphone likes to do that weird like kind of elect electronic robotic skip um, during the audio every few minutes so it would be like I'd be like, D -d -d diamond paint, 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 painting, <laughs> like <laughs> for like a second, and then it'd go back to me talking. Um, but there was nothing I could really do to clean it up. I mean, it was either that or nothing. So I'm hoping we're making some improvements going forward. I'm continuing to try to work on that. But I was talking to my roommate, my new roommate Joe, about that. I was like, yeah, I. Uh, ooh, there's a little weird bridge over here. Let's cross it. Let's do something weird. Um. I was talking to my roommate, Joe, and I was like, yeah, I put up this vlog and the audio kept skipping. And I was like, I sounded like 
that robot from Pee Wee. And I was like, what's the name of that robot? And he's like, Conky? And I was like, yes, I sounded like Conky. <laughs> he's like, oh my God. So I played it for him. He's like, you totally do. Come on. This is scary. Can you see this? No side rails, nothing. You could go for a splash and fall into the water there. Um, yeah, I sounded like Conky. And I used to list, I used to watch Pee Wee as a kid, and um, on the the Christmas special from Pee Wee, especially, I had that on VHS, and I used to listen, or used to watch that over and over when I was a kid. But um, Pee Wee was giving um, giving Conky his Christmas list of like his Christmas list for Santa, and he wanted Conky to print it, but of course Pee Wee had like a thousand things that he wanted on his um on his christmas list so conky like basically um overloaded with all of the the gifts that peewee wanted to print out and so he's like P -p -p peewee i'm having tr 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 trouble printing your li 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 li. <laughs> like just started like wigging out and smoke started coming out of him <laughs> and he was like doing like a crazy little conky jiggle and so yeah that's totally what i sounded like so yeah, you can call me Conky if you'd like, but yeah, I, I had a Conky moment. Um, but yeah, I, thank you so much for the comment. I appreciate it. And yes, the collaboration with Jada Gem Shop, I'm super excited about. She's been sending me text messages. She's like, people are actually picking up these kits. And I'm like, well, I would hope so. <laughs> and so I don't know if, um, if they're, uh, be, if they're, if it's been a really popular release. I hope so. I encourage people to not only support Jaded Gem Shop, especially if you haven't tried it before, but if you're planning on participating in Summer with the Masters, this gives you an excellent opportunity to get ahead of the game on that. And if you want to start on your kit early and participate in Gem Jaded Jamboree, you'll get a good two month start if you were gonna get a big old, big old kit or if you wanted to get a couple. So yeah. Um, then Tracy Cruz said, uh, same same video. Thanks, Anthony, for always keeping me company when I diamond paint. I really love listening. I hope you feel better soon. Hi, Apollo. Hi, Apollo. You hear that? <laughs> um, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm feeling much better. I don't know if it was something I ate or if I did have a little stomach bug, but it was kind of a one-day thing. It kind of came and went. So, yeah, we're doing good. I'm doing good. Apollo's doing good. Um, and then Bella Luna has a few comments here. Um, hi, Anthony and Apollo. I understand what you were talking about with your whips. I have a DIC square that I'm just struggling to get through. They ended up pulling it from the site because there are just issues with it. I was letting them know the problems. The drills have problems and something is off with the grid, but I will struggle through and finish it because I absolutely love the image. It is today I will be filled with joy by Jennifer Lambine. Um, oh, interesting. Um, I don't think I've ever heard of that kit. And if it's pulled from the side, I don't think I could look it up. Maybe I could. I'll have to take a peek. Um, oh, Apollo, you just love to play, don't you? Yes, he is He is a playful little boy. Today, he hasn't been doing his zoomies sprints, I think because we went on such a long walk yesterday. So he's much more timid in today's walk. And he's kind of slowing down already because we've been, you know, we've been walking a lot. Um, Bella Luna goes along to, along to say, Red Rocks, that one has been on and off my wish list too. The image just feels like home. You'll have to tell me, I, if you haven't said it before, are you from Nevada or the Vegas area? You'll have to tell me. And then she goes on to say, hence why I'm not on Facebook regarding your talk about that and AI art. Yeah, I was, had mentioned in that vlog that um, someone had asked a question over on the Diamond Art Club VIP group about AI artwork, and of course, it set off a whole, a whole thing again. Um, every time, every time someone brings that topic up, it, it just it's on that Facebook group. It just really creates a, really creates a a, a fuss, and then Diamond Art Club had to turn off the comments. But yeah. Um, and then finally, Bella Luna said, I'm glad you are doing the paint along with Question of Reality later rather than earlier, so it'll give me time to actually get the kit. Good, yeah, um, take your time. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to tentatively say September and October. Um, it may get pushed out, I'm not sure. We'll see what my energy levels and 
desire for content, making content look like after I've done the Jaded Jamboree and Summer with the Masters back to back. So stay tuned. But that's the plan. I mean, it doesn't, I don't think it's going to be a super involved paint along. So yeah, stay tuned. But yeah, you have time. You have time. Okay. Michelle Callender says, congratulations on your collaboration with Jade. Looking forward to seeing the images. Thank you. And I hope you got a chance to take a peek. And then Gail says, I guess I let my pocket vote my preference. If I have an issue, I don't buy. I try not to yuck your yum, but as a flawed person, sometimes my alligator mouth overruns my bird brain. Don't say that. I read that. I read that comment. I'm like, you don't bird brain. Give me a break. I'm sure you're incredibly smart. Um, yeah, I mean, to each their own. And yeah, I, I definitely speak or I, I show my preference for art, for diamond painting by purchasing or not purchasing for sure. And that's what I encourage everyone to do. And, and like I said, I don't expect anyone, everyone to have the same opinion about the AI um, art kits that Diamond Art Club is releasing or the topic in general as I do. It's more about, once again, how we're engaging with those AI artists and any artists on these Diamond Art Club um, Facebook groups and spaces. Um, even if you don't agree with how they create their art artwork, it doesn't mean that they deserve to be attacked and treated poorly. Um, or you're, they don't deserve you to feel like, oh, I've got to get this person and be really nasty to them because they deserve it. You know, it's just such the wrong attitude. And I, I definitely, hun I'm sure hundreds of times in my life have let my mouth get in ahead of my brain when it comes to saying something, you know, and I wish I would have said that differently or wish I wouldn't have said that or let my emotions get the best of me. But I really think that comes into play more often when you're vocalizing something and talking to someone because, you know, it just slips out of your mouth or your emotions get the best of you. But I think it's a little different when we're talking about the a, a intention. Um, picking up your phone, unlocking it, going to Facebook, finding the group, going to comments, typing out your comment and then hitting send. There are so many more touch points there where rationale and reason should be hopefully be stepping in at some point and say, you know, being like, do I really want to say this? So when people get on those Facebook groups and they're like, this artist is a thief and they're stealing this image and their, their artwork is fake and, you know, all that stuff, like, that's a, that's a totally different mindset than, like, calling a friend and talking about it and, you know, something slips out or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, but again, regardless, even if that really is how you feel, um, is it necessary to get on social media and where these artists are also existing um, and sticking it to them like that? Like, is that, do we really need to do that? vote with your with your dollars if you don't like it don't buy it but but there's no need to attack other people so i think we're on the same page there but bird brain come on don't 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 say that <laughs> um leanne palumbo said so good to hear from you can't wait for the collaboration with jade yay thank you all right oh my gosh we've only got two days worth of comments left and there's a lot <laughs> Okay, um, in regards to my finish and review of Borealis, let's see, we're still recording audio. Our second battery's getting there. Whew, okay. In regards to my finish and review of Borealis, Felicia said, this turned out absolutely gorgeous. I think I'll have to add it to my ever-growing, ah, 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 that's a Taco Bell wrapper. Drop it. Let me, t let's find a, let's find a trash can. Oh, look, there's one right here. Um, this turned out absolutely gorgeous. I think I'll have to add it to my ever-growing wish list. My husband and I went to Finland last month and got to see Aurora Borealis for the first time. Oh, how awesome. If you, um, if you have pictures, 
send them to me. Um, my email's in the about me. I'd love to see that. I've never seen it myself. That would be so cool. Finland, how gorgeous. That's, that sounds like an amazing trip. Thank you so much for the comment. Okay. All right. Um, I guess we'll just keep going this way. As long as I can see where the lake is, I don't feel completely lost. We've been doing a lot of figure eights and pacing and stuff, but hopefully it hasn't looked too repetitive. Okay, so Patricia Matei said in regards to my vlog episode 96, Hi Anthony, so happy to hear from you and things are good. Concerning Diamond Art Club and AI, there is no denying that there is a lot more AI on Diamond Art Club lately and less traditional artists. Um, I'm going to read this whole thing and then we'll, um, we'll, I'll, you know, respond. Um, I do hope that you understand that for each AI diamond painting there is, there is one less from another artist. Most of the kits are huge and squares with a gazillion colors, which you need for AI because of the transition in colors made from a computer, which a human being cannot do with traditional mediums. In coloring books, you can buy a book of 100 pages made by AI versus one page drawn by an artist for the same price. And that's where the problem is. If Diamond Art Club pays Christopher Lavelle $30 each time they sell one of his diamond paintings versus $10 to someone who uses AI and they sell both diamond paintings for this, um, the same price, more profit and more AI generated diamond paintings in the future. Anyway, to each his own. And like someone said, mentioned another comment, you vote with your dollars. Have a great day. Thank you so much for the comment. I appreciate it. And I've said this before when we've delved into this topic that um, these responding to your comments videos, I treat them just as though we're having a regular conversation. And so I never want anyone to feel like I'm getting defensive or having, you know, an attitude about anything. But I'm going to give you my honest, you know, response and just as though we were you know talking in person so i hope you're comfortable with that if anyone at any time ever feels like anthony you're being a little too defensive there you really were being especially you know defensive or i felt like you were rude in your response let me know because i will definitely uh i will definitely course correct but i just I, I never want anyone to feel that way i just want an open dialogue a respectful in kind dialogue as well. Um, I hear you for sure, but I, I disagree with with a number of points there, or I, I, at least I have a different view of it. Um, so um, I do hope that you understand that for each AI diamond painting there is, there's one less from another artist. I don't think so. I mean, th that's working under the assumption that that we have to categorize AI diamond painting as something different. So we're taking away from a traditional artist and giving that spot to uh, to someone that uses AI as a tool. And I don't see that as a problem. So I think that's where probably you and I have inherently different viewpoints is I see artists that utilize AI as a tool as being um, just as valuable um, to the artistic community as anyone else. So to me, it's kind of apples to apples. You might as well say for every diamond painting that an artist that, you know, that for, let's see, for um, every diamond painting there is, there is one less from another artist. Like remove the AI piece is kind of how I see it. It's all an even playing field. So I, I don't, I personally don't view it as taking away from one type of artist and giving it to another. It's like saying for every diamond painting from a watercolor artist is taking away a diamond painting from a charcoal artist. That's how I see it. So I see where you're coming from, but I think we just have inherently different, potentially inherently different viewpoints of the value of an AI artist. And I, I, I have an, I place an equal value on their contributions to anybody else. Um, so it's like saying, um, I think you went on to say, uh, something about, oh yeah, so to me it'd be like, hey Diamond Art Club, you you released a Christopher Lavelle image when we could have had a Yume Art. Like that's how I view that, that comparison. Um, and then 
Um, most of the kits are huge in squares with a gazillion colors which you need for AI because of the transitions in colors made from a computer which a human being cannot do with traditional mediums. Um, I think, uh, once again, with all respect, I think that's just an incorrect statement. Um, Diamond Art Club may be releasing um, AI artwork that is huge and square with a gazillion colors, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the only thing that you can create using tools like Midjourney. And I will put some screenshots of some um, AI artists that I really love that I've been discovering recently that uh, focus on minimalistic artwork and keeping things pretty simple and I find them incredibly striking and beautiful. And I think they kind of uh, work against that statement. Um, I could see a lot of these images being rendered with 10 or less colors and still be absolutely beautiful. Um, and they're just really simplistic, yet I, I personally feel that they're incredibly impactful and invoke a lot of emotion and a lot of intrigue and interest, and they're not overly complicated. I think um, what, we tend, what we tend to do is, you know, take what we see and kind of think that that's all there is. Um, it might be all that Diamond Art Club is licensing and releasing right now, but it isn't all that exists in the world of AI. So you could absolutely find an image and create a custom with super minimalistic colors. So I think that's more of a reflection of the company, um, Diamond Art Club as a company, than it is a reflection of the types of AI art that can and are created. So not every single piece of AI art requires a gazillion images. A computer can gen generate images that are very simplistic, very streamlined, um, just as much as a human artist. And I, there's plenty of artists with a human hand um, that have access to digital tools like Procreate and Photoshop where they have the entire <laughs> color range and every shade imaginable at their, disposable, at their disposal. So of, absolutely a human could make something with thousands of colors if they so chose. Um, and I'm sure I could find some examples of some incredibly intricate, high detailed, high color variation digital images that didn't utilize AI art. So once again, I think your comment um, is a reflection of what Diamond Art Club is releasing from their, a their AI artists that they've licensed and not a reflection of what's, what is capable with that tool. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Um, and then um, if DAC pays Christopher Lavelle $30 each time they sell one of his diamond paintings versus $10 to someone who uses AI and sell both of them at the same price, more profit and more AI generated diamond painting in the future. Once again, I think that is a reflection of the business choices of Diamond Art Club and how they if that is the case, I've never seen any licensing contracts that they've signed with tradi uh, traditional artists versus an artist that, that utilizes AI. I don't have those facts and figures. And if, if you know that for certain that that's how much they pay Christopher Lavelle versus how much they might pay All Claire Studio, um, I'd love to see the, that documentation showing what those licenses look like um, because I can't confirm or deny that they, that they value their artists at, at different values. Um, I, I would hope that they don't because I think that those artists should all be paid the same across the board. But if that is the case where Diamond Art Club places less value on All, all Claire Studio versus their other artists, then that's a Diamond Art Club <laughs> problem. And that, that's something that I would, um, I would advocate for is them, is them treating those artists um, or giving them the same opportunity to earn from the, the work that they do as anybody else. So I don't think, once again, that that is the fault of the AI artist or the tool. I think that is an issue with how companies value um, those artists in their creative process. So I hear everything you're saying, and I see where a lot of those those sentiments can come from, but it's who we're directing those concerns toward concerns to that I think is is the bigger issue here. Um, I think a lot of that falls at, if if all if everything that you said was 
true about the pricing and you can get a hundred coloring pages for the same price as one traditional artist, then we need to reach out to the publisher of those, those coloring pages and say, hey, why, why aren't we treating these AI artists with the same, or giving them, you know, the same rate as anybody else? Why is their work any less valuable? Because it does take time and skill and effort to put it together. Um, that's like, that's like um, if we're gonna, you know, mince words there, then how long does it take someone with an iPad and Procreate to put together an image versus someone that paints it by hand? Are we gonna start, um, you know, differentiating that? Or maybe someone takes less time to paint with, uh, to, you know, draw an image with markers than it did someone to use oil paint. So if we're gonna license someone that uses oil painting that takes longer and requires quote unquote more skill, should they get be getting paid more than someone that grabbed a marker? So that's kind of where I see it is like, if, if, if that's how we wanna break it down, then we should really, then maybe we should really, really break it down and have all these different tiers based on how long we think it took someone to complete an image or how much value or, or how much skill we think it requires to do something. And then who gets to be the judge of that? You know, is there a Diamond Art Club skill judge that says, uh, 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 you only used Photoshop or Procreate for two hours, but this person over here did it for two hours and 15 minutes. So you're gonna get $29.20 and they're gonna get 30. So that's kind of how I see it. I think it should all just be equal um, no matter what. And, and Diamond Art Club should be selecting and licensing and releasing images based on how well they think it'll sell, what speaks to them, what works for them as a brand, regardless of what tools were used to create it, and everyone should be getting compensated at an equal playing field. So I hope that makes sense. I hope I didn't ruffle any feathers there. I, once again, I see what you're saying. Um, but I, I just don't believe a lot of that is is true in practice. I hope that I hope that's okay. But thank you so much for the comment. I appreciate it. And at the end of the day, vote with your dollars. And that's that's what I'll continue to do. I'm not trying to advocate for more AI AI artists or a, more AI artists in place of traditional. I'm I I don't think I've ever said that, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm just I just appreciate seeing it there in general. Um, and I think it can all coexist. I don't think it has to be for every AI art image you're taking away from another artist. I just don't believe that. I just don't believe that. Diamond Art Club could just as easily reach out to All Clear Studio and a traditional artist on the same day and license them both and release them both. And I'd have to believe that's how they operate their business. I don't think they they do like a... If we pick All Clear Studio, then we have to boot another one. You know, I, I, I just don't think that's their business model. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, okay, and then Lisa said, Oh, wow, I can't, um, I can't wait to see your choices of old masters, Anthony, as you have great taste. I asked Jade to do a rooster with hens and Our Lady of Cow Parsley for me so I could do somewhere with the masters with you and I am thrilled with how they look and that she then added both to her shop. Oh, awesome. Excited to do summer with the masters with you, young man. I have no idea why, but I just love you. You are, you're so classy and kind. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate the kind words. That's so nice, that's so nice of you. And that's awesome that, um, I've seen that happen a few times where someone will request an old masters from Jade um, to do as a custom. And because they're old masters and she ha doesn't have to do any separate licensing, she's already done all the work to, to get it rendered for you. So she'll end up just putting it up on the shop um, just for anyone to purchase, which I think is awesome. And that's why I like, I like sending requests to Jade because I'm like, I know if I send her some old masters, then not only will I get it, but I'm sure a lot, a lot more people will have access to it. She, I just love the flexibility of how she puts stuff on her site. It's just... It's really cool. Um, but it's, yeah, classy, I, I sure. <laughs> don't don't uh, hang your hat on that <laughs> and put me in that box because I'm sure I'm gonna do something at some point on this channel where you're gonna be like, that was trashy. <laughs> so I just don't wanna, I don't wanna um, 
set myself up to disappoint you. <laughs> I contain multitudes, <laughs> so just keep that in mind. But I hope that I, I am always, you know, maintaining a kind and respectful manner. And even though I might feel strongly about a topic or um, feel heated or particularly um, energetic about talking about something that that I don't let that bleed into making someone feel um, attacked or feel like they they shouldn't comment or feel like I'm silencing them. I never want that to be the case. Um, I always want to create a safe and open space for honest and respectful dialogue. So, yeah, um, kind I I can I can stick to. Classy, we'll see. <laughs> like I said, I have a. I have that parody video coming, <laughs> and I now that I bought so okay so tangent, so I bought all my costuming for this parody video, so I went back to the source content, which in and it in and of itself, the source content video I personally find to be far less than classy, so just that alone will make that <laughs> in turn make my video less classy. Um, but I, I got my costuming, so I got a big yellow sweatshirt. I got two wigs. Um, I got some tank tops, like a turquoise, like aquamarine tank tank top. Um, I had to, I had to get a a bra, a black bra, because there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, bra slippage in that video. <laughs> Um, I had to get a lot of eyeliner, an inordinate amount of eyeliner, um, and two different sets of press-on nails. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. So, essentially, you know, the, the, the source video is two people, you know, live streaming together. So I've started to write the script of the back and forth between the two, but I have to record them separately. So I have to record all of one per one characters or person um, and give the pauses for the other person, which is still me, to talk. Do it all in one costume. Do a costume change, come back, film the other person, once again, still me, and then stitch the two together. Um, so it looks like I'm talking to myself in two different costumes. Um, so, I'm working on it. I have all this stuff at home and I'll probably start filming that soon. And then there's another piece to it that I have yet to film that I'll most likely do tomorrow or Monday. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, just classy, just temper your expectations. <laughs> I'll say that, temper your expectations. I'm doing it, I, I've talked to a couple crafty friends. Hey, hey, nope. We're not eating poop today. You did so good this whole walk and now you're into it. Um, I was talking to a couple crafty friends and they're like, it's a funny idea and I like it, but be careful, you know, be careful about even though it's all in good fun and it's in response to a video that I found pretty awful. And so I think a, a little poking fun is is appropriate in this situation. Like, not everyone's gonna feel that way. And even though your subscribers and viewers know you and understand where you're coming from and know the context, it's it's gonna spread, you know, because it's about something that was, you know, a big, a big point of drama and stuff, you know, a year ago. So people are gonna see this that maybe not would have looked at your channel otherwise, and they might not understand where you're coming from and take too kindly to it and you're gonna get some heat and some people are gonna be probably really upset with you, a couple people in particular. Um, and I'm like, and so I, I'm just keeping all of that in mind, but I know my intentions aren't, you know, are to, my intentions are in truth to poke a little bit of fun at the situation in the video and how ridiculous and uh, poorly executed and poorly handled that whole situation was. Um, so I, I, that's, you know, and I, I think it's funny. So it's kind of like stepping outside of my normal, you know, my normal single and placing Anthony because I'm showing off a little extra sass and a, a little extra, you know, um, 
le less than class, you know, because I could just as easily not do this, you know, but it's an idea that I've had. Um, I want to film this video. I think it's going to be pretty funny. And, um, and I, I want to poke a little bit of fun at what I thought was a terrible situation. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm doing it. I'm moving forward. I'm pushing forward. But um, I, have, I have gotten some, not warnings, um, but just some, some, some uh, personalities that are definitely not... <laughs> some folks that are just like, they have my best interests in mind. And so they're like, just... Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I'm like, I hear you and I understand I'm potentially taking a risk here, but, um, but I, 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 th I think it's fine. I think it's fine. And, you know, worst case scenario, I release this video, everyone takes it the wrong way. I lose all my subscribers and I just go back to diamond painting without creating content. I mean, that's the worst that would happen. I know that's not going to happen, but I'm like, you know, as long as as long as people aren't showing up at my house, <laughs> very upset by that video, then I think I'm OK. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, thank you so much. I appreciate the comment. Um, I'll try to stay classy and kind. Um, in regards to my finishing review of oop, 3% battery. Hold on. Hold on. All right, everyone, this is our last battery and we have about uh another hour and 50 minutes of record time gosh i hope we're not doing it for that much longer but we've already been going this is this is going to be another these link to comments videos are always going to be extended cuts because there's a lot of comments to get through but in regards to my finishing review of borealis by henry clive jm comments said whoa what a cool painting thank you so much i appreciate it Going back to my unboxing of Cutie from Anastasia Degtierenko, Leah said, hey, I've just kitted up or kitted this kit up and was looking to enhance it. If you do en enhance it, can you please add it to the enhancement Google Doc so I can see what you do with it? Yes, of course. I honestly don't know. I don't know what your situation looks like. Like once you kit up a project, how long it could sit before you actually work on it. But that, I mean, I'm going to be very truthful in saying that I don't anticipate getting to that that project this year. So if it's something that you are planning on working on in 2024, I might not have the, the best info for you. Um, but I guess what I could do, let me know if this would be helpful, is I could kit it up at some point in the next few months. And as I'm kitting it up, I could film a video talking about where I see some opportunity for enhancements and what colors I'd pick from uh, DP with sparklers and stuff, so you can um, you can take a look at it. Apollo, why are we now? Why are you suddenly in let's eat poop mode? Let's not do that. Do you want another herring treat? Because <laughs> that's not poop. <laughs> oh. oh boy, we'll start making our way back to the car. I think we're almost done here. Actually, I still got it. Oh my gosh, this is probably the most comments I've had in a two week span than I've had ever. Which is good. This is a good thing, but I may need to start splitting these up into multiple videos. Um, okay. But yeah, if, if that would be helpful if I did like a kidding up video and I was like, oh, I think I could get this and then go over to DP with sparklers and do a color match or something. I could absolutely do that. I just don't know. I, I just, I don't think I'll be wor physically working on that kit and have a finish to post like a full enhancements doc and stuff like post finish for you. Like, I just don't think that's going to happen. So let me know. Let me know if that would be of use and I will work on that. Um, okay, going back to my vlog episode 96, um, Alley Cat said, so funny, Anthony, I saw that Facebook post asking about AI art and I cringed. Oh boy, this is going to start a fiery debate. Thanks for chiming in. Yeah, I just, you know, I, I, I just went on there and I was like, hey, just treat people with respect. How about that? How about we try that? And there was a couple people that were like, no, I won't. <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> it's just like, okay, well, <laughs> well then see ya. <laughs> you know, like, I'm not going to engage with that <laughs> at all. Um, and then Alley Cat said, so excited for Jada Jamboree and Summer with the Masters. I already have my Mooka kit. Woohoo! Nice. 
I'm um, going back to my finish and review of Borealis. Um, I think this is Alana, Alana Berkla. Hopefully I got that right. Said, I love jaded, I love jaded gem shop quality and everything. I got my first painting, which is my current whip, and I'm obsessed. I don't think I'll buy from another shop for a while. I'm going through, I'm thoroughly enjoying Jade and her artists. Oh, that's so, I, Jade, I hope you hear that if you ever watch this video. Um, yeah, she's got some amazing, unique and varied artists. I'm always, every time she releases something, I'm always surprised by one of the images. Like, whoa, didn't think I'd see that kind of style or that kind of imagery. And there's always a level of uniqueness to what she does um, that I think just always keeps her site very fresh and very engaging. I always like to go on her site and just poke around, especially if I miss a couple weeks of releases. I love going through and being like, scrolling, scrolling, add to wish list, scrolling, scrolling, add to wish list. I think I have 12 on my wish list from her right now. So thank you so much. And I, I will give her the message for sure. Um, going to my, whoa, a lot of comments. Oh, okay. This is in regards to my event announcement for Jaded Jamboree, which was just uh, yesterday at the time of filming this, I believe, or the day before. Ooh, there's a lot. Okay. Uh, Bella Luna said, I will love to watch how this progresses. Thank you. Um, Amanda Kazudas said, very excited for this event. It sounds like a ton of fun. Just one question for you. Do you have a typical time or estimate as to what day or time lives will be? Like, does one of you live stream during the day and one in the evening, weekdays or weekends? Just trying to get a feel for how that is structured for the two of you. Um, excellent question. Excellent question. And I don't have a clear answer for you right now. Um, Jade used to go live on Thursdays um, to coincide with her releases. It's been a little while since she's done that. So I don't know if that's the same um, schedule that she'll be sticking to um, because, well, A, because I just don't know what her schedule looks like, and B, I work in office on Thursdays. And so that would be, that wouldn't be a convenient day for me to go live unless it was in the evening. So if she was willing to go later on in the evening on a weekday, that would be the most comfortable time for me to join her. Now, I'm not expecting her to have to have me on live with her every single time. I'm more than happy, you know, if she needs to stick to a specific schedule to go live on her own um, for all of it or some of it, who knows. For me personally, as long as it's in the evening on a weekday, I'm fine with it. But ideally for me, the perfect day would be Sunday. And I don't know what time of day, probably Sunday late afternoon. So think like three or four o'clock Mountain Standard Time, only because that gives me enough time to take Apollo for a hike and do our outdoorsy stuff on Sunday before I have to get home. So none of that's been set in stone and I don't wanna, I don't want to promise a specific time and then it completely changes. So just stay tuned as soon as we nail that down. Um, most likely at some point in March, um, Jade and I will work out a, set, a schedule and we'll release that schedule before the event starts. So just stay tuned. I'll do my best um, to get that to you as soon as I can. Um, Queen of Diamonds said, I just ordered two kits from Jada Gem Shop. I absolutely love her kits. Got my first one a couple of days ago, and I'm so in love with her work. I went, I want in on this event and summer with the masters. This is amazing. I'm excited to participate. Yay, that's so good to hear. Yeah, Jade said that she was getting some emails from a few folks saying that they can't wait to participate, and that's so good to hear. That's so good to hear. Um, Chris Greek says, Hi Anthony, I just subscribed to your channel after seeing Jade's announcement for the Jade Jamboree 2024. It looks so fun. Yay, thank you and welcome. Um, I'm new to diamond painting, but have never been one to start on the bunny hill for anything. So I am ordering the Mooka uh, poster for Sarah, um, I think it's Bernhard. I can't wait. My sister's career is in performing arts, so I think it'll make a lovely Christmas prezi. I know that I will be kidding it up the day it arrives. Yay! That's so good to hear. I love hearing that. Um, yeah, I got that one too. So I'm not sure which one I'll work on for the event. I haven't decided yet because um, it's most likely, I'm most likely going to pick two 
and then let them both roll over into summer with the masters and just do all four months with those kits. Or I might do one at a time. I haven't decided yet, but I think that one's going to be one of them. We'll see. But thank you for the comment. Sarah Barden said, thank you for the announcement and showing all of your kits. I'm excited about this event and I can't wait to attend the event. I looked at the old master's curation. They are beautiful paintings. So very cool that you curated these kits and made and making them available for us. Of course. Yeah. Me and Jade have actually been talking about this collaboration release even before we had come up with the idea for the event. It's just something that I thought would be really cool to, uh, as a content creator, to work with a shop on a like special edition release. And then um, we started tossing around the idea of an event. Um, even a couple of years ago, like the first summer I started diamond painting after Summer with the Masters, me and Jade were talking about potentially doing a Henry Clive specific event. And that kind of carried on for a little while and then it morphed into anything in all things jaded gem shop just to make it more open for more people so i'm glad i'm glad everyone's excited about it because we certainly are let's go back the way we came i kind of want to start heading back to the car we're parked literally straight across the the lake but we still have more talking to do <laughs> um, but yeah thank you so much for the comment alley cat said can't wait for the event Love Jaded Gem Shop, working on one now. As a matter of fact, I think you should try to get the Last Supper done for the event, LL. <laughs> okay, all right, you know what? You're banned from the channel. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my gosh, could you, could you imagine? Could you, only, could you imagine if I was like, all right, I'm getting this 60 by 280 centimeter kit done <laughs> during this event. I'd have to diamond paint pretty much 24-7 for two months straight, no sleep, no bathroom breaks, no eating, to even attempt to get that done in time. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for the comment. Um, Leslie said, just what I needed, another diamond art kit. I saw Jade's post uh, posting yesterday and, and purchased Matsuri Hatai Phoenix, so um, the Phoenix glaring in all directions. And after watching your video today, I purchased the Chasm of the Colorado. Oh, that's so cool. Um, it is stunning. Both are. Never mind the other Jaded Gem Shop kits I haven't been able to get to. Gee, thanks. You're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew those. I knew a few of those images were going to be hits. I knew that Phoenix one was going to be a hit because it's so cool. And if anyone can do that render or that that level of detail um, in a diamond painting rendering, it's Jaded Gem Shop. So I'm really excited to see how that turns out. I ordered that one as well. And the Chasm of Colorado, I, I think I saw that image or that artwork or something similar from Thomas Moran at the Denver Art Museum, and it just really spoke to me. Um, I think, it, I, think it, I did see that exact piece because I took a picture of some Colorado-specific artwork that I was like, I'd love someday to make the, do a custom. And so, yeah, I'm so excited for you. Cynthia said, sounds like a good time. Yes, I hope it will be. Um... Cheryl, yep, um, said, essentially, it's a DP along event. Love it. Yeah, it's, it, it's doesn't, it's somewhere in between. Um, I, you, I think the differentiation a lot of people make is like, event means that you have to like sign up and show progress and there's sponsors and, you know, there's a little bit more to it. Whereas a DP along, there's, it's just, it, we're, I'm working on a kit, and if you want to do it too, come along. So yeah, I guess it is kind of somewhere in between. So yeah, thank you. Von Kaiser said, oh my heck, I did not need a reason to spend money, but the Colorado one and the Phoenix will probably have to come this way. That's so cool. That's another person that is really interested in those too. So it's kind of interesting to see which ones are piquing people's interest. That's really cool. Um, nice choices. I'm working on the Good Shepherd right now, but I'll be done with him before the event. Yay! I hope you get to participate and let me know which ones you decide to pick up. Michelle Callender said, so excited for you. Thank you. Um, Amber Grace said, I am so excited for this event. I will be receiving two of my kits on Saturday that I ordered, and this event is a perfect reason to kit them up. But also my very first order I purchased was a mystery, and I can tell that it has mermaids in the image, so I'm very excited to announce that I'll be doing that kit for the Mermaids and Magic event coming up in March. Oh, awesome. So, I mean, technically, if I don't finish that image in March, I can roll it into the month of April for y'all's event. 
heck, heck yeah. <laughs> sorry, this is so long. Um, sorry, um, sorry, this is so long. I type what's in my brain and what I'm thinking. Oh, I, I encourage it, I encourage it. <laughs> um, you know I am freaking thrilled because as I was typing this out, UPS just showed up with my order from Jade Eek. I could scream with excitement. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. I'm loving hearing all the excitement and positivity around this event. And I know Jade is, uh, feels very thankful um, that we've been getting such positive response as well. Um, uh, she's just, she is just not only a really cool person, but just, just very sweet and has, I don't know, she's just amazing to work with and I don't know. She's a really cool person. I, <laughs> um, I, I love having her as a personal friend. I'll just say that she's, she's awesome. Um, Felicia said, I'm so excited for this event. I really enjoy watching yours and Jade's videos. I'm hoping I'll be able to hop in while well, you guys are live, but it will depend on the time because I'm currently living in Europe, but I'll definitely watch the replays if I can't make the lives. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I'm once again, as soon as I have more details on what that will look like, I'll, um, I'll share that. Um, in a vlog or, and I'll try to make special note that way, you know, like, oh, this is the one where he's talking about the schedule. So I'll try to make note of that. Jade said, hi, Jade. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. Thank you for being a host and pushing me. <laughs> I, it's so funny. She like, I was talking to her cause I'm very much like, if I get an idea in my head and I'm really excited about it, I'm like, let's do it. Let's go. Like I get a little hyper fixated sometimes. And Jade's personality type is kind of little, from what, I, from what I've understood so far and from my experience working on this so far, um, she's a little bit more kind of like bits and pieces at a time. And so I've been the, I've, I feel like I'm being overbearing because I'm like, okay, let's do this now. Let's get this going. And so I feel like I'm being overbearing and like doing, I'm doing too much. And then, so I worry that she's gonna, she's feeling like I'm being a little too pushy. But then when I was chatting with her last time, she's like, if you can't get a hold of me via text, just call me anytime. Like, thank you for <laughs> like making, helping me make this happen. And I'm like, see, we, you're feeling a completely different way. Like she, I think she feels like I'm kind of helping this along and I feel like I'm being overbearing. So I guess we make a good team. <laughs> Stacy Hardy says, I'm super excited for this event. One of my current whips is from Jaded Gem Shop. The quality is awesome. I have quite a few Jaded Gem Shop kits in my stash, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to work on Bright Light Little Spirit by Pabkins, AKA Tabitha Jensen. I met her at a craft fair in November, 2023. In the next week or so, Jaded Gem Shop released one of her pieces as a kit. There are two from her now and I hope lots more to come. I've bought some washi tape from her, so I have the perfect washi tape to use with the kit. I love the idea of this event being more about the community than anything. Oh, yay, I'm glad you're excited. Um, yeah, we just wanted to, you know, get back in, I wanna get back into doing some live streams and and um, kind of flexing that live stream muscle again. It's been a long time since I've done one. Um, and I know Jade is feeling the same way. So at first we, I was, we were thinking of doing just, you know, regular videos and, um, which is fine. I love that style of content too. Like maybe do a video talking about the history of some of the artwork and stuff. But I was like, we decided that doing the live streams would allow us to engage in real time. And we can still talk about some of that history stuff and sprinkle that in too. So I think it'll be a, a really nice mix in a good blend of content styles and it'll allow us to, you know, engage with everyone in real time. Let's go this way. Um, e EV Doodles says, so excited to join in on the ramp up to this event. Already ordered one of your collab with Jade Kits, Matsuri Hatai Phoenix. So Phoenix glaring in all directions. Yay, another, <laughs> so people really like that kit. That's awesome. That was one of the last ones I had selected because I was like, I really want some wood, um, either wood block print or Japanese style. And Hokusai is a really cool artist with like a ton of history. And then when I learned that he did that as a mural at the age of 89, I was like, this is amazing. We, I, we gotta do this one. So that's what we did. <laughs> we're coming towards the tail end. We're almost there. Apollo, we're going this way. 
Um, so yeah, I'm glad you like it. And of course, we're, we're happy to host this event and I'm glad that you found an image that you love. Catherine Hauserman said, I'm unable to attend the Jaded Jamboree, but I look forward to Summer with the Masters. Oh, awesome, yeah. Even if you are um, you can check out the live streams um, on replay, that is, that is perfectly, you know, perfectly fine. And we look forward to seeing you for Summer with the Masters too. Come on, let's go. He's getting a little, I think he's getting bored more than anything else, tired and bored. And I'm getting hungry. Um, and then in regards to my vlog episode 96, Mia said, I would love to join in on you and Jade's event. Sadly, it will be too expensive in the end with added taxes and the stupid $25 fee for our posted service taxes for taxes for looking at taxes. It's just ridiculous and also a shame, really. I can't wait to see a tour of your new crib and walk around Golden. Take care and hugs to you and Apollo PS. Thank you for giving me your opinion about my new glasses. Went with the purple since everybody said purple. Yeah, Mia was trying to decide between uh, new glasses and one one pair was either like a super dark gray or a black and one was kind of a royal purple and I was like purple for sure. They looked really good on her. Um, but yeah, I totally understand. Those international taxes and fees can be killer, especially when it increases the cost of your product by over 50%. That's just ridiculous. Um, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to, um, speak out of turn or speak on the behalf of Jade, but hang, stay tuned for the, um, stay tuned for the live streams that happen. Um, we haven't confirmed whether or not we'll be doing any giveaways or, or prizes or anything. At least we haven't talked about it yet. But I, I know that me personally, I'll be, you know, throwing a couple bucks into the, into the pot um, for some stuff during the lives. I, I don't want to, I don't want to say, I, I don't know what that will be. And I don't, I don't have additional details. But Mia, I know that you have been really dying to get your hands on a Jaded Gem Shop kit, but the cost is just a little prohibitive internationally for you. I can't say that I, you know, will be, I'll be, you know, buying an entire kit and covering all shipping and stuff, but there might be a good enough incentive to get, you know, you might be able to get a little discount or at least enough to cover that additional shipping fee. Um, and yeah, and then maybe you'll have a chance to, get a Jaded Gem Shop kit that way. Um, this is me just spouting off. So I, once again, I have not confirmed anything with Jade, but I, I can say that I, on my live streams that I do on my channel, I do intend on doing some sort of thank you for everyone for participating. And it should at least be enough to cover those additional taxes. So, you know, you could take, you know, $50 USD or, you know, $75 USD off the cost of the kit, maybe that would soften the blow a little bit and you can finally get your hands on one if you were to win that, win a giveaway. So all hope is not lost. <laughs> and I, if I can help you get one of those kits, I will. Um, but thank you for the comment. Going back to that announcement video for Jada Jamboree, Michelle Hausberg said, I'm so freaking excited to work, uh, excited I'm going to do Frank Bronguin uh, swans so it can move into summer with the masters. I got the max size, whatever that is, because go big or go home. That's right. <laughs> I think um, I almost always go big or go home with jaded gem shop kits. There was a couple in this most recent order that I got the one size smaller, but yeah. Tiffany Archer says, I wish I could join the event. I have a cross stitch conversion that I was looking at doing, but unfortunately won't be able to order it until late this year as the drills are going to cost a minimum of 450 New Zealand dollars and the canvas will be around 170, which sadly I can't afford to do right now. Well, I totally understand that. That is, yeah, those, those cross stitch conversions, depending on the size and the color count and everything, they can get really pricey. I have one that I ordered um, I got the drills from Francesca Studio Works and the canvas from Heaven and Earth Designs. And when I added it all up, it was around 400 USD. And then I ended up throwing away the canvas because I really didn't like the canvas quality. So I, I hear you. I hear you. But, you know, um, if it's something you really love and it's worth saving up for, then there, there's always going to be an event or something going on that you might be able to use for it. So stay tuned. 
Hannah over at Sparkling Spectrumite said, how are we looking on time? Okay. This will be so much fun. I think it'll be time to get out my Last Supper kit again. Mine is the five foot one and I'm about a third of the way through. Yeah, I remember you were working on that, that kit. And I think you got like the one, one size down from me, I think. But yeah, this is an excellent reason to grab one of those jaded gem shop kits, especially if it's one that's a longer term project and, and uh, keep working on it. We're almost there, everyone. We're almost there, and I only have 10% battery left on my phone, so we better be. Um, okay, in regards to my, these are all in regards to my most recent vlog where I took everyone on a tour of Golden. Um, Mia said, love the new place, and Golden looks uh, like a really nice town. Let's cross the street. See, you call, the, you call that a small town, which is why I say I live in a village. We have around 300 houses in my little village, and the only shop we have is a grocery store with a gas station attached to it. Yeah, that is more of a village for sure. Um, Golden is, yeah, for the Denver metro area, it's, a, it's small for sure. Um, but yeah, um, I think the, uh, the town that I grew up in definitely has more than 300 homes for sure, but they have one grocery store and it. Just like you said, it's more of a convenience store than anything else. Um, and the post office, they have more churches than they have uh, anything else in, in my hometown. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'm glad you got to see a little tour. Kay Whittington said, so glad to see your new neighborhood. You are such an outdoorsman. This is, this looks like the perfect place for you in Apollo. I don't usually watch, just listen, but I have enjoyed watching this one. Oh, yay. I love your roommates. Mustang reminds me of one, the one my grandmother had when she was trying to teach me to drive. Come here, come here. Um, I sympathize with you about the slow internet. I live in a rural area and my internet is terrible. I was downloading a song while I was watching this and it took five minutes. Good luck getting yours upgraded. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I hope that, um, I hope that I am able to work that out. I haven't broached the subject yet with my, with my roommates. I need to talk to them about that. Um, my alternative is I could always grab my computer and head over to like a coffee shop or something in town and just do my uploads from there. And that might encourage me to get out of the house a little bit. So, um, and I might have to do that temporarily because if I'm gonna start recording in 4K, the file sizes are much bigger. So it's gonna take that much longer to actually upload a video. Like this video alone would probably take, if I was to do it from the new house, it would probably take a full two days, like a full 48 hours of nonstop uh, processing on YouTube for it to actually upload. Whereas at my old place, this would take a couple hours. So I've got to figure something out. I've got to figure something out. But thank you so much, Kay. And um, I appreciate the comment. Color and chat with Joanna. Hi, Joanna. I was just moving. Um, I was just moving the other day all of my Christmas cards and cards that I've gotten from subscribers and stuff from the old fridge. I had them in a bag and I put them on the new fridge and I hung up your Christmas card in the new place. Both of them. So you're, you, you moved with me. <laughs> Anthony, love the new place. Hope you're very happy there. Apollo sure likes it. Yes, he does. And thank you so much for the comment. Um, anytime I see your cards... Um, it always just brings a smile to my face. So I hope you're doing well. And I, I forgot to comment on it, but I saw your video with the dogs out in the snow and it was so cute. Um, I could I could watch that without the sound on and just have that as background as like peaceful, <laughs> peaceful video. It was very nice. Um, okay, Alley Cat said, wonderful, wonderful tool. Ugh, I'm... My mouth is like going numb from talking so much. Wonderful tour. So glad you are happy there. Thank you for taking on your project to learn the AI tools so that everyone can be better informed. Nice of Hannah to meet with you. Looking forward to hearing how it went. Yeah, it, it went super well. I'm going to hold on to, um, I'm going to hold on to more details about that. I'm going to start creating some specific content around that, but it went very well. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to share. Thank you for the comment. And then finally, um, as of 22 minutes ago, Leanne Palumbo said, once again, great video. Had me wanting to pack my bags and head to Golden. In the summer though, this Texas girl can't do the snow. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yeah, it gets a little chilly. Gets a little chilly for sure. And I, I'm still getting used to the fact that 
Golden is kind of the very first town when you come, when you are headed east out of the foothills. It's like the very first town in the Denver metro area. So we're the first to get snow when it comes through Denver. And oftentimes we get the br we're getting the brunt of it. Like we get a lot more snow in that valley than even just where I used to live about 10 minutes away. So I'm getting used to the fact that it'll, it'll look like a big heavy snow at the house. And then if I have to go in the office, I drive like five minutes and suddenly there's no snow. And I'm like, hey, what happened? But it's because we're in this valley. And so the weather just likes to sit and hang out and just dump on us. So I'm getting used to it. But yeah, you'll have to come visit in the summer. And I can't wait to start filming in the summer there. Show everyone some of the fun activities. Um, but yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the comment. I appreciate it. Let me just let me just get around some of these folks. Apollo's in full wigging out mode. Hold on. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that. I'm gonna let you go. We're just there's so many people around right now. Um, but thanks for sticking around for this whole video. Um, depending on some of the editing I have to do, we'll see how long it ends up being. Oh, it looks like. We can turn here. Let's see where this leads us, Apollo. Actually, I don't want to walk around. Yeah, we're not equidistance from the parking lot. It's definitely faster to go back the way we came. So I'm going to do that because we've we've been going already. I wonder if my watch is like, are you on a walk? Let's see. Let's see if it recorded any of that. Let's see. It did not. Well, I mean, my watch didn't count it as an activity, but it will count it as steps, if that makes sense. Like, it's not going to record it as, you are exercising for three hours. It's just going to say, you walked, you know, 11,000 something something steps, or however much it ends up being. I guess it's not that far to the, to the car, so... We'll walk the, we're going to take the long way around the lake just to enjoy a little bit more peace and quiet because we're kind of skipping a lot of the traffic. But anyway, this video has already been plenty long enough. I appreciate you coming along with us. Um, these longer videos, these responding to comment videos are some of my favorites to do. I love engaging it with everyone. I love having, you know, some, some honest back and forth, being able to hear from you, even if it's just to say hi or just to, you know, have a quick comment on an unboxing or something. It just adds so much value to know that people are engaging in that way. It makes me feel connected to everyone and not so siloed, which, you know, helps with mental health for sure, just as much as the craft of diamond painting. And Again, when it comes to some of these touchier subjects or subjects that people aren't as willing to, to broach and touch on, um, I think one of the things that uh, can't, could potentially be a little bit risky with covering topics like that and saying, comment, come one, come all, we're having an open dialogue, is, is the risk of someone popping um, popping onto a comment or com uh, commenting something really unkind or something really combative or something, you know, really short-sighted. And they're, I'm just so lucky to have such awesome, respectful, kind, and open-minded folks as part of, you know, the little, the single in placing fam um, that I, I never really worry about that. And in addition to that, I never feel worried that, um, that, you know, someone's going to, you know, really get on the defensive of a response that I have or anything like that. Like, I, I feel very comfortable and I feel very safe in this space. Um, you know, I was not necessarily warned, but again, some, some other crafty friends that kind of have a different mindset when it comes to comments and stuff. Um, we're like, you could be opening yourself up to a whole can of worms. And if you're committing to responding to every comment, 
if you really stand by that, you might get a comment that <laughs> is not going to be, you know, super hot. So are you going to skip those and not read those ones? And of course, if someone was like using foul language or, you know, really being, you know, aggressive, then yeah, I might censor a comment or two, but I've never had to do that. I've never skipped a single comment um, as I've been reading them. I've always been totally fine just keeping an open dialogue and creating a, a space where we don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. And so I just love that we can continue to do so and that that I've got some awesome folks around that that allow that, allow that space. And I, I think as more and more people find the channel and they'll see um, that openness, that, um, that sense of respect and commonality of treating people kindly. Um, I hope it encourages more people to, to subscribe and, and join in on the conversation um, and feel safe in doing so. So you're you, everyone here is just as big of a part in creating, um, creating an open and welcoming space as I am. Um, so it means a lot to me. It really, really does mean a lot to me. So keep it coming. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this content with friends, family members, anyone that you think might take some value out of it. Otherwise, happy placing. We'll see you next time. Bye, 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 bye. Come say bye. Okay, bye. Hop up. Oh, good boy. <laughs> you get another herring treat for that, baby. All right, bye. Bye.